Hello everyone, welcome back, welcome back. Sorry for the long delay, we just had a little bit of um, technical difficulties that needed to be overcome, but now we're all back here and we're ready to resume the adventure. Before I do so, just a very quick reminder to all of you, uh, if you would like to support the people who are involved in this project, you can do so with all of these links here. We really, really, really appreciate your support and helping share the word of what we get up to. Sharing the archive of our sessions would be really nice too, if for anybody that you think might be interested, and also following each and every one of those channels listed there would be very kind of you to do. Uh, the tiny URL at the very bottom is a legacy document that lists everybody who's been involved in the project over the time that it's run, so that'll be like every single person who's been part of it over time. So if you want to click on that document, it's also the easiest way to get everybody that you should engage with and follow in, in one big cluster. Uh, otherwise, the only other thing that I'll say is... Um, the other best way to support us is to just send whatever you can spare monetarily to contributions to Epi's channel, and uh, every $10 of the contributions you receive on the channel will go towards increasing the Goblin Bullshit Pool, which is a mechanic in the game. And uh, yeah, that's that's basically the long and short of it. So, uh, hey Goblins, are you guys ready to get back into the adventure? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know, is the Pope Catholic? No, he's not. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, that is false advertising. It is sort of like when the pink kitten is like, hi, or wait, the pixie's kitten. I asked if they had cats in tea, and they told me there was no cats there. That is false advertising. That is an outrage. That's bullshit. Thank you. Goblin bullshit. No, I can't say it in that way, otherwise it gives Ooh. me It has come... It has all come full circle. Every time I say that's and it not including this sentence, you fucking nerds out there. Every time I say involuntarily or otherwise, that's some goddamn goblin bullshit. The pool goes up by one point as well. Okay, so, so you can kind of like up that pool by one now, right? No, <laughs> that was the example statement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What was I, the example statement? I think it should. I think it should count, don't you guys? What was the example statement? Sorry. Everybody gets to experience. And and a goblin bullshit point, right? No. Uh, I'm kind of pissed. <laughs> okay, you can be the piss piss baby for all you want. Shut the fuck. No bullshit <laughs> has no. Oh no. no. Oh no. The dicks is piss. <laughs> Oh. There hey. is some real dick and balls torture going on tonight. Cock and ball torture. Uh, no, that's weird I'm and gonna, inappropriate. I'm, I'm, you know what? <laughs> Anyways. So as when we left our goblins when we took the break, <laughs> gonna fucking hit them. Gonna, where is it? Where is it? There we go. Hit that. Alright. The last time we saw the goblins, they had just finished wrapping up the night at Cracktooth's Tavern after winning the performance and uh, Dixie coming in second place, but still all being all around heralded as very accomplished goblin entertainers for the evening and receiving praise and opportunities in equal measure. Vichetti decided that he wanted to bring the goblins out to investigate uh, something that he had going on at the garrison. Oh, excuse me, garrison. Oh, excuse me, sorry. I have the burps. Um, and as you guys were heading along, you all found a shrouded figure on the roof of a, of a building who was watching you. And after realizing that they had been seen, decided to make an escape. However, considering you guys decided to chase them down, they were cornered on a rooftop and are now watched staring down Desi, who just took an arrow to the leg out of fucking nowhere for no real reason. And is now kind of like, uh... <laughs> Whereas Newt and Dixie are both on the roof now, and Snooty is currently recovering from falling off the side of the building with uh, Vachetti uh, riding on his back. And now he's kind of like, he's a little wobbly, and as, as he looks at Snooty, he goes, Oh, Snooty, uh, I'm sorry, do you want me to try carrying you up again, or, or what? would you like to do something else? I, I, I'm a little drunk still. Yeah, my bones. Here, get, my on, bow. Get, get on my back again get get on my back she like crawls very, very like slowly and dramatically back onto his back <laughs> all right now i'm gonna give another roll for machete <laughs> oh, 
goblin bullshit go? <laughs> All right. I'll allow it because it's tied into Snooty. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, put the goblin bullshit points down to 19. And we'll uh, go ahead and have a reroll for Vachetti here. Hey, it's it's not great, but he's not falling off either. It's a very slow going experience. And then Snooty. <laughs> it's 10 again. It is 10 again. And also, you you leave no reflection. So as you're going up, oh no, you don't see yourself on Vachetti's back in the reflection of the windows as he's climbing up the side of the building. And it's a little confusing. So Snooty, how do you want to react to not seeing yourself, even though you feel like you should be able to see you there? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. So as Vachetti and, and, and Snooty enter round two of panic wall climbing, meanwhile, Newt and Dixie, you have come up just in time to see Desi take an arrow to the leg and this lady standing across, um, looking a little confused. And how do you, what assumptions do you guys want to come to as Desi looks into ah, and this lady ah, just standing oh my there? God, it's in my leg. I'll never adventure again. No. <laughs> Who shot, who shot you? Did this lady show you? Uh, no, that lady works at the the, the, the pink pixie kitten play. It doesn't matter. You pull it out. Uh. <laughs> and Jesse's just gonna start rolling side to uh, side. Yeah. In case it goes, I, I uh, without saying, I turn back into a goblin. All right. So you turn back into goblin form and go over to Desi and do what? Cast heal. Alright, cool, cool, cool. Go ahead and, and uh, activate that from your character sheet. And as that's ha happening, Dixie, what do you want to do? Uh, muted. <clears throat> uh, I think she'll just try and uh, continue uh, riding on on uh, Newt's back and just try to support Newt, to feel Newt, out the situation. Newt turned Wait, back sorry. into a goblin. Are you gonna just try to still ride the <laughs> goblin, or? <laughs> oh, I, uh, I, I, I got a little distracted. I apologize. No worries. I was delivering this. Um, I, I, I suppose I'll just uh, try to hide, sort of, but uh, ready myself to attempt to. Uh, just kind of be prepared. Actually, can I make a perception check just to kind of like look around and see what's what's going on? Uh, yeah, sure, sure, absolutely. Go ahead. Just to kind of uh, center myself and all that. Uh, oh, nice. I need a D twenty from chat. Uh, Desi, you are now up to full health again. Does the arrow just pop up like a splinter? Yes, I need a I need a roll from chat. Exclamation mark D twenty, please. To see uh, what comes of Newt's magical uh, elements as well. Uh, um. What side effect? Shush. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, do you got, are you happy with an eight, Newt, or do you want to call Goblin bullshit? I mean, at this point, you might as well. Goblin bullshit, cool. <laughs> All right. Another roll from chat, please. Exclamation mark D20 from somebody else in chat, and we'll see what affects Newt. There we go, a 15. Excellent. You age a year, Newt. Shit. If we uh, get enough okay. 67s in this campaign, I think it might, like, curse of years slow-mo kill one of you. <laughs> um, also, Time um, is a whore that won't stop sucking. Hold on, hold on. Um, I need to make another roll, actually. Hold on, where's oh, my... Oh, okay. Uh... Hi is like your mom even though it is slapped it never stops um what would be the what did it say to make oh, no. what are you trying to make a roll up. for newt i gotta roll up scroll back up to sticky hands oh oh yeah um yeah so you see 14 athletics did you touch desi to heal her i have to Oh, it's a well then, <laughs> yeah, all right. So you go to heal her, and you're kind of like, oh, like, um, and the healing is so effective, Desi, that you feel 
like you are uh the wound closes up completely with no scar and the and the the arrow literally just kind of like pulls itself out of you and floats into the air <laughs> gone uh, so like it just it goes upwards into the sky confusingly as you're just like what the fuck and it just disappears into the night sky and uh, uh I the athletics <laughs> now now what? newt has both what? of her what? eight inch long fingers wrapped around your entire leg and she's trying to pull off of your leg but can't uh, my hand stuck busy my hand stuck <laughs> Oh, why are you being uh, so weird? <laughs> what? Ah, oh, actually, thank you for the healing. You're not being weird at all. Except this bit. <laughs> no, uh, it's my leg. Desi, through, through sheer force of will and, and a little bit of extra work, you eventually hey. dislodge Newt from holding on <laughs> to you. Desi, thank you for saving my hand. Yeah, you, 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 you welcome... Uh, uh, Newt will, will hug Desi, but making sure her hands are out, like palms away from her. <laughs> she looks, uh, the, the lady across the way as all of this shit's going on. Uh, by the end of all these shenanigans, as she's just standing there, she looks like she's thinking, like, should I run? Should I stay? But she's obviously, like, just completely confused about the whole interaction right now. And as she's doing that, Vachetti just like, uh, uh, like hauls himself up over the edge. And Snooty, um, you're kind of still completely paranoid about the loss of your reflection, but have otherwise made it up to the top. So Snooty, as you come up to the top, you can see that uh, Desi and Newt are kind of like, uh, Newt has just been pulled off of Desi's leg and they're both lying there. Uh, Dixie, what were you getting up to exactly, by the way? <clears throat> Uh, I wanted to, uh, actually, I'm trying to ignore the archer that's doing some, some extra shit, since I'm still super focused on, uh, what, like, just the, the, that the fact that the lady was looking at us. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to cast Illusory Object, uh, and it's just, like, some really big, uh, like, how do I put it, like a, like a staff, almost, like a, sort of like a, a magical staff with, like, a, a crystal at the end of it or whatever right mm -hmm. uh and then uh i would like to uh scream out to uh the lady that everyone seems to kind of be or the the initial lady the one with the the yellow mask on mm -hmm. yeah uh and i want to uh yell at her to uh <clears throat> You gotta come with our. Uh, <laughs> oh no, Dix just screamed. Come with us! <laughs> no, Dix prematurely yelled. It happens oh. to everybody. <laughs> and. Because uh, I'm trying to formulate my words, because. I, I, I basically want to get across the idea that, like, I want her to come in with us, but I don't want her to. I, I still, I still want to ask her questions. I don't think she's off the hook. Okay, so what do you say to her exactly? Um, I mean, maybe I just say that. I just go. <clears throat> You're not off the hook yet. We just need to. We just need to find someplace safe, and then I'm going to uh, question you. And you should be afraid of me because I am the great and powerful Dixie. My friend Frank is here too. <laughs> and then uh, I suppose I roll an intimidation. Sure, you can roll an intimidation roll if you want. Thank you. Oh, not bad. Do you want to keep that one? I am fine with this. All right, all right, all right. Cool, cool, cool. Let me go ahead to the... Uh, all right. Um, I guess in this instance, a will save is probably relevant. So we're going to add a circumstantial modifier. Uh, oop. Oh, God. Circumstantial modifier, plus 20. <laughs> Shit. All right. She's a little bit more like... The reaction of this fa shrouded figure looks like they're a little bit more just confused and bemused. Um, from their body language and the tilting of her head. 
and she, you get the impression that like everything that, that, that the, your interpretation of her is is telling you that she's not taking you seriously but also hasn't like completely scrambled off the roof yet but snooty as you come up and you see desi being healed by newt and dixie is summoning this this uh stick essentially out of thin air and being like, don't you move, kind of reaction. What do you want to do as you haul up on the back of uh, Vachetti and he just deposits you onto the roof as he just lies there for a minute catching his breath because now he's like, oh, God, that climb. Uh, uh, well, I don't even know what's going on. We just saw you guys running. Why were you running? Who is lady? I wasn't paying attention. What were you guys doing? My bones! <laughs> Your poor bones. I hope that you are okay, Snooty. Do not break your singing bone. Uh, <laughs> I was asking Lady what her name was, and then something shot me. Oh no! What happened? When you was shot? What? Looks around, uh, looking to see if she arrow. can see. And it hit me. The curse. The, the curse. The uh, curse. <laughs> you, yellow, wearing me. I don't know who you are. Why are you on roof? She looks at you, and she's still a little flabbergasted about all the comparatives to the Pixies kitten employment. And, <laughs> and she want you get the impression she holds back an outburst of like, I'm not working with the Pixies kitten to like readjust herself to the experience, and just goes, I am the shroud. And I'm not here to dilly-dally about. I have business to attend to, but who the... Are, are there more of you? Where do these goblins all keep coming from? We am's goblins. And oh, she please. said the title, everybody. Run credits. <laughs> I did this again. I did the <laughs> last episode. I'll do it again this time. This she uh, puts her hands on her... <laughs> She puts her hands on her hips and she looks, tries to make herself look more like the leader of the group, even though she knows for a fact she absolutely is not. Mm -hmm. And she she looks at them and goes, We am goblins. We are trying to get Sidamim. We try to live here. Yeah. And we want to know what you do on the buildings. Excuse me, um, Miss, Miss, Mr. Shrew. <laughs> ha, 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 why you on top of building? So why you name yourself after an animal a shrew? <laughs> uh, she's is just, he, oh, it's because you're so tiny. She, she, she looks so confused at this interaction and just goes, I, I heard some rumors around about you. I mean, there was... Hmm. Goblins looking to live in Sandpoint. Now, that's an interesting... Anyways, it's not important. I've got a lot of things to get up to tonight. And I can't be slowed down by the likes of you. So if you let me go, I have important things no. to do around... Uh, <laughs> I asked uh -huh. admitted you a question. We have oh. the jailer right here. Uh -huh. You need answer questions because jailer here. Um, I, can I do something? That's sure, how what? that works. Uh, could I, could I uh, try? Uh, what was the? What was it called? Could I try jumping up to her and uh, attempt to apply uh, the House of Imaginary Walls <laughs> to trap? Like, you want to put her in an imaginary box? Yeah. Well, it is a cantrip, so yeah, you can give it a shot. Alright, what do I need to roll for that? If I just lunge at her, uh, and then uh, start miming a, 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 a wall around her. Uh... What does that say it uses? Uh... <laughs> um... I'm taking a look at what your baseline would be for the... It's an 18, so she needs to disbelief. So she needs to roll a perception roll. Um, okay, interesting, interesting, cool, cool. Um, well, 
she's no no slouch on perceptive. Uh, let's see, five, six, seven. Okay, so that. Um, nope, nope, that would be the three. Okay, add that. So basically what she needs to do is roll a perception roll to beat an 18 DC of your spell. Otherwise, she will not think that this is like... If she... It'll stay there, and she doesn't really know what's there until she tries it. But this is the preemptive roll on whether she, like, actually, like... Is affected by it. Is affected by it, more or less. So, boop, well, fuck. I've trapped her. (laughs) She... You... You make a... How do you want to, like, perform as you cast this, by the way, Dixie? Uh, I... I mean, I don't... I don't feel the need to, like, hide anything, you know what I mean? I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna, uh, run up and, like, right next to her just start... Like, pressing against walls that, uh, I mean... You know, the, the illusionary walls. Uh, I'm just... I'm just gonna run up, I'm just gonna start doing it. And... and basically just, uh... I don't, I don't even think I don't even think I need to say anything. I'm gonna I'm gonna just focus on my work for now, and I will I will address her when I am done. Okay, so you start to mime out the action of creating a, an invisible box around her is what you're telling me, yes? Yep. And she looks a little confused at first and goes, "What the hell? Oh come on! There's no way that you what the fuck are you doing?" And she like reaches out to you, and her hand stops in midair as if she like can't move any further and and she starts moving around and now now it looks like dixie's doing a kind of sort of interpretive dance while the shroud is now like doing a mime stuck in a little box fucking like performance and she's like what what the fuck have you done what are you doing why am i trapped in here it's it's not no box i can't see the walls you're not until you answer our questions Ah. she like slams her shoulder against the invisible barrier which looks fucking ridiculous to everybody else but she's legitimately making impacts as if there's like a solid wall there and she's like trying her best and like what you done what you and she points at all of you and says you're all a bunch of witches ah no, I am an alchemist. I make bombs. Wait, are we trying to keep Lady from running away? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think we asked her questions because she's being sketchy and we just want answers and then we let her go. <laughs> Any input from you, Snooty, or are you going to just keep standing there triumphantly being like, no go anywhere? She's she's just gonna keep saying that she has she has the jailer here and she needs to listen because that's the rules of having a jailer present because that's what <laughs> was happening to them when they give, were in jail. Give me an intimidation roll with advantage thanks to the fact that she's trapped now. Snooty. Ooh, not bad, not bad. Let me go ahead and roll her will save on that front. He is going to have a bit more circumstantial. Alright, no, yeah. So she looks at you, and as you say that, Vichetti, like, getting to his feet, like, trying not to throw up, he's, he's like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, um, uh, hello, it's me. What are you doing running around all over the roofs? It's not, it's kind of suspicious. Are you committing crime that's not appropriate, especially at this time of night? <laughs> he just kind of pats you on the head, Snooty. As he comes up to stand next to you. And he goes, these are my goblin sisters. And if you have a problem with them, you have a problem with me. Is that understood? And the lady just kind of like, she looks like she's doing a little bit of mental math. But then she just sighs. And she goes, okay, what what questions you have? Uh, I didn't think we'd get this far. I... <laughs> Well, okay, your name is a shroud, and that is not the actual name. No, so. it's Shrew. Oh, Shrew. I am sorry, Miss Shrew. You're going to uh, say her name right, but not mine? Shut up, Dex. <laughs> Go on. 
She shuts up. <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> well, now I just feel bad. I don't mean you need to shut up. Just be nice. Anyway, uh, Miss Shrew, uh, uh, why are you spying on us? All right, first, I'm the Shroud. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm not the, the shrewd. shrewd. Got it. Shrout. Shrouds. Oh, sorry. Oh, I understand because you swim like on fish. the top of the city. Yes, like a, a a fish that swims on the top, like a trout. But you 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 are trout. above the street. Yes, yes, a sky trout. trout. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I thought yeah. Oh, Under I'm sorry. I thought it was true. Okay. Uh, well, first everybody gets all... two XP. <laughs> uh, first of all, why are you spying on us? Second of all, you should answer Snooty's questions. And uh, third of all, uh, why did you threaten me with rope? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Listen, lady, I have rope in my backpack, too. I know how to use it. You tie things. I, it was just sort of a weird flex on your part. I, I also like, have rope, but it's inside yeah, rope. Uh, yeah, like, it was a weird flex. It, I Really, I'm only over here because I am friendly and uh, not easily scared by rope. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, listen, lady, if you're trying to push rope at me or dicks, then, you know, oh. you should. Well, everybody gets 2 XP. She interrupts. <laughs> like the attempt at eliciting my eyebrows. And she goes, All right, all right, look. I was keeping an eye on you because I keep an eye on a lot of folks around uh, here, all right? There's no... Uh, I'm not getting up to anything suspicious. I just have my uh, own... I have my own actions that I take. And uh, I, I'm i not sinister, all right? You don't need to worry uh, about my presence here. It's fine. I, uh, I'm i just looking over the townsfolk, okay? I just want to make okay. sure if you're causing any problems. I Honestly, uh, if, I, if I'm being entirely honest, I was out tonight keeping an eye out for something suspicious and... There were some individuals who had made their uh -huh. way over to the town garrison that I was going back to keep an eye on before I ran into you. Oh, wait. Uh, hold on. That Shetty, uh, you know, there's apparently people going to the garrison that look shady. Uh, the, the, wait a minute. Desi's gonna turn around. And look at uh, the shroud, pause for a minute, and then turn and look at uh, Vachetti, and then turn and look at the shroud, and then back to Dad Shetty and go, uh oh. Vachetti looks down at you, Desi, and goes, What? What is it? What's the problem? Uh, I think while we were chasing this lady, the sketchy people went to the barracks. Uh, oh. Oh. Wait, and he looks up at the shroud and says, Are you telling me that there are strange individuals who have gone into the garrison? And the, uh, the shrouded lady nods her head and she says, Yeah, I was keeping an eye on them when I had uh, heard uh, a little bit of a boisterous noise coming out of the trap tooth. And when you all emerged, I wanted to keep an eye on that to make sure that... Were... To, to be fair, when I saw a group of goblins, I thought that there might be a bigger priority there. But the rest of you seem... For, forgive the tone of this statement, but you seem quite intelligent for a group of goblins. Fuck you. <laughs> Newt's gonna start jumping up and down, super excited. <laughs> Clapping hands. Be nice, He's that is not... Big Brian. Uh, the big Brian, yes. Uh, also, Dix, that is very rude. Did you, you should... not just hear her insult her? That's... Never mind. <laughs> Sometimes people are just not as in touch 
with gobbles as they could be. That doesn't mean that you could just be mad at everybody. You're excusing racism. Uh, we got this since the day we got here. It's... Yeah, this is not new. We're Get so over used it. to it. Of like course This is all in Goblin, by the way, that Studi's yeah. saying it. Oh, if you're it. talking so in Goblin, uh, I actually don't know Goblin. <gasps> It's not a it's not a tongue that I that I know of. I only know. Uh, please tell me you're just staring at her blankly. Like, why the fuck are you going? <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, she takes she shakes her head and goes, "Look, look, look it's not. I, I didn't mean it as an offense. I'm sorry. It, it really wasn't something I meant. That I just don't mean a lot of goblins and the ones that I have and the experiences I've had with my family and all those have been rather untoward." and rather violent, so the four of you seem like you have a a better disposition is all, and I apologize for any assumptions made. I didn't know that there were goblins out there who were anything but brutish invaders. We just want to live here. Yeah, we just want to live here, and also... We're just, Desi's just gonna kind of turn around and just be like, uh, do any of us look like invaders? Uh, no, you look like... Don't say something racist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope that you actually said that in character under breath. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was the idea. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just need a minute. She, she looks at all of you and goes, No, to be honest, I wasn't expecting, um... She does, like, the finger poke thing and goes, uh... Attractive goblins? Well... Well... Uh -huh. Well... Well, I mean... Why does it, everyone it keep saying that? But... Fuck goblins? Yeah, we only got stuck to each other a few times. And Newt has yeah. sticky fingers, but that, that, I don't understand. No, no, Desi, remember we had somebody say that we were very pretty, and we were uh... wondering why, because we were told we were very ugly, so uh... I don't understand. Yeah, I'm not, not used to this, con no, by goblin standards, I am a trash fire. I am the ugliest, and yet I got to marry Chief. She, the woman in, in her, like, in shrouding looks a little bit of sympathetic when you say that. She goes, oh, I'm sorry, darling, that's, that's not true at all. You're all very pretty. Uh, Stares in disbelief. Uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't oh, know No, 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 Frank, Frank, I, I, Frank, I think she means you too. It's okay. Dixie, what were you going to say? Uh, apologies. I, I didn't want to interrupt. Uh, I was just going to say that um, Dixie would get uh, really blushy and embarrassed and then uh, and then to the end of the imaginary box and like smush her face into it and like stare up at her. <clears throat> really? <laughs> Do you mean it? <laughs> Machetti holds his hand up and goes, Yes, 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 you're all very pretty goblins. You're all my wonderful sisters. I would appreciate anyone who found you attractive. And he gestures to, to the chest shroud and says, Look, you, I've heard of you. The things you've done around town. The markings you've left. Whatever you're out here to do, you can do it later. But right now, if you said that there's people inside of the garrison who are causing problems, then we need to head over that way right away before it becomes even more of a problem. And she nods and says, I, that's something that's definitely priority right now. And she looks down at you, Dixie, uh, with like a little bit of a, a soft look in her eyes. And she says, please, my dear, could you let me out of this box? I really, I didn't mean to startle you or cause any problems. And I think you're a very pretty goblin. Really? 
<laughs> she takes like she does like a little a little laugh and goes, Yes, really. She's fine. I like her. Uh and then I uh remove the cantrip. <laughs> so you drop the invisible box, which as far as anyone's concerned, it's like, is it is it there? Is it not? <laughs> <laughs> and she just takes a step forward and is like, oh, partially because like now she has the belief that it's gone. It's not there. <laughs> Fucking weird <laughs> spell. <laughs> and she strides forward and she goes, all right. So I think what would work best here is if we all head over to the garrison. I will take uh, an approach from the roof, if that's all right. Uh, I'll try to meet you inside. Um... I really don't want to be seen. Out Take in... note so ah, we sketch. know that you will be watched. Uh, what? Take... She, she gestures to Newt, like, the... Uh, like, or, well, she doesn't know their name. And she's, she's like, who's Newt? Newt raises her hand excitedly. Oh. And goes, I will come. Oh. Uh, it's all right. I will come with you. I already come with dicks. Oh. Um, <laughs> Two XP. <laughs> she <laughs> she doesn't know how to handle this sentence. You just you just spoke. Newt, Newt will run over and be like, sh sh jump on her back and be like, no. And <laughs> <laughs> you're by this point, your fingers. Uh, and your sticky hands have gone away as well, because it's been like a decent hour since that affected you. Okay. So as you jump on her back, you just kind of like, she's, for a moment, she's like, what the fuck? Hello? Um, sorry, I can't help but notice you're floating there. Newt, Newt thinks this is just a normal thing, since so far all of Newt's friends have jumped on her back. <laughs> she gives like a little, like, laugh. Almost a bit of a chuckle under her under her covering, and she goes, "All right, well, lead the way. We'll head on over there, and we can meet up again um, as we determine what's going on in the garrison itself." All right. Uh, I the whole sliver. Uh. Does anyone else have any questions for the mysterious shrouded woman or anything they want to do on the roof before you guys head to the garrison? Uh, no, you have a nice day, lady. We're going to go stop the shady people. She's also, coming with you. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, Newt's on her back. <laughs> That's right. I forgot. Uh, Newt, if she do anything funny, you know what to do. Uh, Pretending yeah. that she is like big boss lady. You know what to do. No, I don't. What do I do? Uh, you bring out the tummy ropes. Got it! Tummy ropes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, also, Faithy, if you are going to be sneaking around, Yellow is sort of, uh, look at me. I'm bright. Not very sneaky. Uh, you know. I could help with that, maybe, you know, just flip that around. You know, they make a lot of reversible clothing. You could have the yellow on the inside where you can't see it. And then, you know, the darker colors. Right now, you sort of look like a bumblebee. She, she laughs a bit and says, it's intentional, dear. I want to send a message. Ah... Okay, got it. I think we should have more awareness for bees, and oh. cross pollination is very important. So, so it's about sending a message. Uh huh. It is about sending a message. Aye, those who commit wrong in my eyes in the town, I make sure that their dalliances are made aware, and keep people in line for the kinds of things that they will be doing to harm one another. So that's part of my what I do. It's it's important. Um, Isn't that illegal? What? I asked you if it was illegal. I well, all right. So Sheriff Baylor does occasionally have a few issues with what I do and may have an outstanding warrant on my head. But I assure you, I'm not doing anything harmful. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm just making sure that when people lie, it comes to an light. An outstanding warrant sounds illegal. 
I, I've, I've aggravated a few people in this town who have been looking for me. Uh, for Why'd what you I've do done. that? Because they lied. I thought. I thought you were. I thought you said you were good. I, I, I am. I'm making sure that that people's dalliances are brought to light. Stop. What? Go. What? He points forward. <laughs> There's shady people. For it. We'll have this conversation yeah. later. And she just starts running to the edge of the of the uh, the the roof with Newt on her back. Yeah, Frank. I think she's trying to avoid the conversation. We should go. <laughs> Alright, so as, I'll yada yada a little bit, but for the time being, as you guys leave the rooftop and head towards the garrison, um, Vachetti, Dixie, and uh, Desi and Snooty. Uh, Snooty, I assume you ask Vachetti to carry you again, or are you go not going oh, yes. to? Oh yes, she she stays in that triumphant pose and says, Big Brother Vachetti, carry me to the garrison. <laughs> he kind of laughs and says, all right, wait, shit, I'm stuck in Scotsman. <clears throat> yes, I will absolutely carry your little sister smoothie, please. Come here. We'll make better time if you are not forced to use your little legs, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. And she stays in that triumphant pose as if to be like, pick me up this way so I can stay in this triumphant pose. <laughs> all right, he picks you up and carries you in a way that he tries to facilitate for that. And I'll spare us the rolls Wonderful. to see. If you guys eat shit getting down, because I do need to expedite this a little bit. Um, so, uh, Newt and Shroud are heading up to uh, the upper levels of the garrison. And the uh, the rest of you, unless anybody else has a different approach that they want to take, let me know now. Otherwise, I'll let you guys know what you run into. All right, cool. So, uh, as you're walking up, uh, heading towards the doorway here, uh, Vachetti stops, uh, he, oh yeah, he's carrying Snooty, so Snooty, you should be, like, on his token a little bit there to kind of represent that for the time being. Desi and Dixie are both walking along, and as you're coming up to the front, you can see a guard who looks like he's kind of, like, slouched sleeping, uh, at the door, um, and I'm going to go ahead and hide this reactive here, and we're gonna go ahead and show where the play area is now. Doodly do. Switch over here. Go down here. Zoom on out. Doodly do. And again, a big thank you to Athane Photography, Athane, for making these maps for Sandpoint for me. I really appreciate you doing that, and I can't wait to see the rest that you make because it's fucking awesome having this space to work with. So as you guys approach the area, um, Vichetti is kind of he's getting a little more sober now, and as he's walking along carrying his snooty, he just waves over and he goes, "Eh, uh, how's the guard going tonight? Has everything been going all right?" Uh, we're here to uh, hand in the... And he stops for a minute. And uh, let me go ahead and change the ambience we're dealing with a bit. So you guys can go ahead and do it too if you want. So. As he steps forwards towards the figure that is slumped up against the wall, they seem to look like they've been propped up more than they have are sleeping or resting. And Vachetti stops for a minute, and he goes, Oh, I don't like the look of this. How would you guys like to respond to this encounter? What do you mean you don't like the look of this? What does that mean? Um, <laughs> as he comes to a halt there, he reaches his hand out, uh, he he kind of looks over at you, Snooty, and says, Snooty, do you mind if I put you down for a moment? She pouts, but nods and says, Okay. Vachetti puts you down, and he starts walking over to the guard, who's, like, propped up against the wall. Uh, the, the wall. Does anybody want to do anything as he's walking towards the guard? At all. You don't have to. I just want to know. Snooty is, like, attaching herself to his leg, though, and it's just, like, following him like pace for pace okay and she doesn't just Oops. oh right there. oh, oh okay <laughs> you get you do it you do it <laughs> <laughs> right there <laughs> um all right meanwhile desi anything on your end i'm going to watch this 
uh, closely, uh, but I'm going to let Dad Shetty do his job. All right, give me a perception roll if you're taking a close look at your surroundings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. pretty perceptive. Dixie, before I tell Desi what she sees, what would you like to do? If anything, you don't uh, have to do anything. Well, I can I can roll a, a perception check same way. Sure, right? Absolutely. Yeah, if you want to do just do a general perception, you can. I think I think that's that's where I'm at right now, so I'm gonna do that. Fair enough. All right. Um, Desi, as Vichetti is getting closer, um, the guard is looks like he has two things going on right now. One is he slumped over. And it looks like somebody's made an effort to cover it, but looking closer in the light of your low light vision and being able to see a bit better than Vichetti could, you can see that his throat's been cut. And there is like a streak of blood that's coming out of the wound down the front of his body. And he's been propped up in a way that makes him look like he's still standing guard. But very subtly attached to where he's standing, it looks like somebody's rigged some kind of uh, pole wire or something to his corpse. Uh, 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 uh. I'm going to uh, sneak rush over here and I'm going to grab Vegetti's hand and then I'll be like, uh, uh, uh. man is dead. Did somebody kill him? He's He's got like a pole wire. Don't touch him. I think it is a trap. Um, Vegetti is going to pull back for a second and uh, this is going to be... Uh, he leans he, he stops for a minute and says what what are you talking about and Dixie what you notice as you're taking a look is Desi seems to have noticed something wrong with the guard and as you're looking around and taking notice of stuff um, all you really take notice of is the fact that uh, it's a very quiet night and some areas of light around the exterior have been extinguished along the lamps that are normally illuminated so it looks like there's an inconsistency in the street lighting and the lighting outside of the garrison has been extinguished as well so the area is meant to look intentionally dark i just uh look around and uh without necessarily like trying to give out information it just kind of comes out i just go wow it's really dark and hard to see as I keep uh, looking around, trying to find anything. All right, do you move closer to everybody, or do you? Because right now, where we're encountering everything, your positioning matters a lot. So, like, make sure you're putting your tokens where you want them to be. Oh, guys. sorry. No worries. Yep. Yoink. All right. Vachetti stops for a moment, and he takes a look at the guard. Um, also, fun fact: when you're using Foundry, you can move your your uh, token around with W A S D, and if you hold Shift, you can move the facing of your token as well when you do that. Uh, <laughs> I expected that. Uh, so Vachetti takes a look at it and stops and notices what you're drawing attention to and he goes, oh, oh no, Tyrus. Oh, that's Tyrus. What happened here? What, what has happened to Tyrus? And he takes a closer look, like getting closer, and he says, somebody's rigged him up with and he follows the wire and he looks at like this setup that's been kind of packed in behind him that looks like it's meant to be an explosive and also kind of like a noise trigger like it's something to that might disperse a kind of gas and also create a loud noise and Vachetti stops for a second as he's like closely looking at it and goes oh oh we need to be careful we don't want to move him at all until this has been dealt with and he also follows the gaze and at the same time Desi you follow it and part of the rigging has been rigged up to the door as well so the front door of the garrison has this wiring that's like looped in with very like hard to see fishing wire against the guard and the door itself uh, uh, I can maybe disarm this Vichetti gives you, like, a look and says, I know you're very handy with explosives, Desi, uh, but, uh, I don't know, are you confident in, in being able to take something like this apart without it going off? Uh, well, I make lots of things, and this is just a thing. Mm. I also know how to unmake things. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, to that effect, I will let you 
pick what stat you want to roll for and give me an argument why that stat would work for this disarmament then. I can make an argument for crafting because crafting, I can use my understanding of how this device would be rigged up because I make bombs and that isn't an explosive. Uh, and I understand how to make explosives work and function uh, mm -hmm. that I should be probably able to look at it and know how to uh, disable it. Um, that would be, I think, an area of expertise that Desi just has. I could also go with thievery because thievery generally covers uh, covers all things that are just like shady and all that. But I think since it's explosives and is uh, basically uh, a rigging system for a remote detonation, I'm pretty sure Desi understands that. So. All right. I'll let you make a crafting roll for it. So go ahead and use your crafting modifier and make me a straight roll for it, please. Uh, okay, one second, let go. Oh, bam! Ooh, not bad, not bad at all. I'm pretty sure you'll keep that one, yes? Uh, yeah, this is not the Rhoda. You do not get to make me redo all of my rolls. <laughs> I wish. Uh, <laughs> part of me misses that mechanic of trolling my players, but on the other hand... I hey. do not, you always used it against me. <laughs> you were, as they call it, a bitch. <laughs> All right, Desi. Uh, you move over to the corpse and fiddle a bit with the uh, the wiring and manage to loop it around and unlock it while holding stuff in place and just very gently take it apart and bring it all into your pocket. So now you have a fully intact tripwire trap that would be a poison gas dispersal and also a noise trap. So if you wanted to reset this at any uh, time, you could. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'm going to add that under equipment. All right. So as you stash it into your pack, Vichetti takes hold of the man who uh, he had previously said as uh, Tyrus and uh, just kind of like slowly lies him down on the ground and goes, Ugh. Uh, this isn't right. Something's going on here. We need to get inside. And he stands up and fiddles with some of the keys that he has on his equipment to unlock the front door. Um, does anyone... He's trying to be kind of quiet about it, but he's also still a bit drunk. Does anyone want to intercede as he's doing this? Because he's making a bit of noise with the keys. Snooty ah. takes his keys. All right. <sighs> like she climbs up and goes... Shh, 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 Takes keys, tosses them over to Desi. Ah. Because Desi's uh, taller. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. I will open the door carefully. All right, Desi, give me a thievery. Oh. Or stealth. Whatever, they're the same modifier. I used thievery. Mm, not bad, not bad at all. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, okay, so uh, as that happens, I am going to make a roll. To see if there is a perception roll that is going to happen here or not. So let me go ahead and hit that button. Uh, it is going to be this, because I technically don't want you to know the profile of the creature. So let me go ahead and just hit that roll normally. Interesting. All right. Desi, do you want to keep that roll first of all? Uh, let's see. It was a base uh, 11. You're it was it. a base 11, yes. Uh, I mean, that is an 18. I'm pretty confident in it. Uh, okay. I'm going to keep it. All right. You open the lock on the door and very quietly push open the heavy metal door that acts as the front for the building, trying your absolute best to halt its screeching. Um, as it is a rather heavy metal uh, thing, and as you push it inwards, you go in here and... Um, as you look into the room, you can see that there doesn't appear to be anything noteworthy uh, down this hallway, or from what you can see down the left and right hallways. So, for the time being, seems pretty clear. The lights are still illuminated inside, nothing too untoward is really detectable at the moment. Uh, how would you like to proceed as the first one into the building? Uh, let's see. I would like to 
stealth my way over here and then sort of do like the peek down this hallway and then peek around that hallway. So, uh, you know, I am now Desi Fisher and mm -hmm. I am doing the splinter cell. I would like to gobble and bullshit <laughs> that role. All right. Hey, much better, much better. Does it get? <laughs> well, this is a, a another one that's dangerous for you this... because you might lose that other benefit you have if you end up fa failing. No, no. Hey, there you go. That was yeah. close. Ooh. I got this back. I. <laughs> I will never sleep again. I will get so much crafting done. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, for me, interesting. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so as you're looking around, you look down the hallway down to the left side here. And as you're looking to your right, I think I will leave us in a bit of suspense because we need to check in with what Shroud and Newt are doing. So, in the meantime, as this is going on, by this point, Shroud has scaled up the side of the building, and you now are on the rooftop access to the upper part of the garrison. And uh, she takes you up onto the top, Newt, and as she gets to the top, she goes, Are you, are you going to stay on my back, or should I put you down now? Is Newt adding any weight to her? Very little. No, I'm good. <laughs> she sighs and says, okay, but... It might be in your best interest if you're not on my back, if anything bad happens, so we both don't get hit with anything that might be the problem. Fine. Newt will, like, begrudgingly... And sadly get down as Newt's thinking, now I guess Nudie. <laughs> <laughs> so she walks up to the upper palisade, like, entry point of the uh, the garrison. And it, it's obvious that, like, nobody really uh, uh, thinks that there's, like, a, a reason for security right now. Because even though the doors are closed and locked, some of the windows of the, like, upper interior garrison are just wide open, letting air in on the summer night. And the sh Shroud just kind of stops and takes a look through the windows for a moment. And then she turns to look at you and says, All right, I'm going to go in and start making my way through the levels. Do you wish to come with me or do you have another idea in mind? Yes, I was told to keep eye on. On me? It's just going to stare blankly at her as if she just said everything she needs to say. <laughs> she sighs and says, all right, I don't have time for this. Uh, follow me and try to be as quiet as you can, okay? Newt is quiet as Gabo. <laughs> she shakes her head up and down enthusiastically and climbs in through the open window very quietly. Yeah, I was about to say, I need a stealth check from you. Are you going to keep that roll or are you calling no, Gabo? Gabo and Bushy, go! <laughs> Why Good. can I roll the night? <laughs> I rolled worse. Well, you try to be as sneaky as you can, and then you look down and see that your hands are your feet, and your feet are your hands. Newt's gonna scream internally. <laughs> <laughs> Not again! So Would it this... still be called a handstand? <laughs> Go ahead, Newt. Newt's gonna pull like um, what was the one the one guy from like episode one, the pod racer alien? <laughs> Zabulba. Yeah, yeah. Newt's gonna start walking like that. <laughs> <coughs> All right. So the shroud and Newt will move you to the second floor to represent where you're coming down from. And as soon as she gets to the bottom of the stairs. 
she sees you. She look, turns around and looks up and sees that your hands and feet have swapped. And her she doesn't say anything, but her eyes go wide in, like, abject horror. I will, I will raise my... 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 Hood to my face and go... Shh. <laughs> <laughs> I love this so much. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Alright. Meanwhile... Back on team bottom floor. Team we bottom, have... go! Oh, no, no, we're not calling it that. Um, Desi, you took look around this corner here to see two individuals coming around the corner who don't take any notice of you. And you overhear them talking to one another. And one of them says, I swear I heard the door open. And the other one goes, I didn't hear a thing. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm telling you. Somebody's coming in. Uh, we need to go check it out. Uh, and they're frustratedly walking in this direction. and uh, But they haven't taken note of you at all, Desi, uh, because they're very engrossed in their conversation. So what would you like to do? You only have a few moments before they turn the corner and come towards the front door. I am going to... Let's see. One, one moment while I look at... Uh, the all of my things. One moment. Uh, I have two ideas. One of them is chaos. The other one isn't. Okay. Do you need a mm -hmm. roll for it, or are you? Do you need the chance to do a tiebreaker? Desi, or? you know what you must do. You must have the strength. Uh. Of the couple, Daco. Uh, yeah, I am going to uh, put the fang shears in my mouth and you become a, the couple, Daco. And then, like a horror movie, I'm going to Daco sprint. <laughs> Okay, so you're gonna turn into you're gonna turn into a into a goblin dog and then just sprint past them down the hall. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to sprint past them down the hall this way. <laughs> okay, all right. That's and I'm fair. going to duck under the table. All right, so you duck into the into the kitchen and go under the table. And the two of them uh -huh. stop as soon as they see you do that. And one of them goes, was that a fucking dog? And the other one goes, I think, I, what the fuck was that? And so as they're coming forwards, uh, you guys see this interaction very clearly through the open door of the front door. So Snooty and Dixie, what do you guys want to do? As you can, It's very clear she's illustrated that somebody is coming to investigate the front door. And Desi has disappeared down the hall and like into another room. So, what do you guys want to do in response? Uh, I pull out my staff of barf. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. And where are you going to stand? She's going to stand right in front of the door, in front of where Dixie, whatever she was going to do, is just in the way. Dixie, uh, what are you going to do? I don't think that you're in the way. I'm going to actually... Uh, run i'm gonna do ghost sound which is one of my cantrips and i want to uh i want to make uh like a sound of like just normal dogs out in the street or something as if they're like running around to try and kind of give credence to the idea that oh maybe that was just like a rogue dog or something well, hold sorry my brain completely blanked on that that plan can you go over it one more time for me I can't believe you. Uh, I'm I sorry. To do, I wanted to do ghost sound. Okay, uh, which ghost is, sound, yeah. Yeah, an auditory illusion, and I want to, uh, which is one of my cantrips, and I want to do that of uh, just the sound of like some dogs barking, just to kind of give the uh, uh, credence to the idea that maybe that was just a dog that just ran through. <laughs> so, like the noise outside or inside the building? 
uh, outside. Okay. So are you going to stay out of sight from the main door, though? Uh, I think I think that's the the attempt is is that I'm going to try and kind of stay off right to the side of the door, so that if they open it, that I'll be on like behind that door. Okay. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so Snooty is just standing there proudly with her barf stick out, and Dixie's creating the illusion of passing dogs. Vachetti stops for a minute and like kind of posts up on the side of the door, giving you a look. Let's like, what are you doing, Snooty? Kind of reaction. Um. Do you pay any attention to him, or are you just standing confidently there, Snooty? She's standing there confidently, ready to bop anybody with her barf stick. All right. So the two guys come around the corner, and as they're doing that, they take a moment to stop. And they just, they hear the sounds and the illusions that Dixie makes, and then they are kind of distracted by, like, they hear the sound of the on, uh, off, off, like, goblin dog shit, dog experience in general. Um, but the two two individuals who have, like, masked faces and are wearing covers come around the corner and just stop and stare at you for a minute, Snooty. And one of them just leans over and goes, Is that a fucking goblin? Snooty, how do you want to react to their, like, discovery of your existence? Do I look like a halfling? <laughs> they're, they're so flabbergasted. And the one looks at the other and goes, did she disarm the guard? They look so confused, and one of them steps forward and goes, uh... <clears throat> he just clears his throat a bit and goes, How can I help you, miss? How can I help you? Strange man in mask. <laughs> they look... They just have no idea how to handle this situation. Also, Desi... She's shaking her barf stick at them, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Desi, are you, uh, you sneaking up behind them? Desi? Yeah, I am. Like, did I not pick up? No, the initial response didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. Alright, give me another stealth roll, please. Oh, I'll yeah. give you... Oh, I was about to say I'll give you advantage, too, because they're completely oh. unaware from this situation. Hey, there you 20. Go. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I will give the roll to see if they actually pay any attention to you. Wow! <laughs> oh, they should have disadvantage because they're talking to Snoopy. No, oh, I gave you advantage. That's, that's how it translates to this situation. They're not exactly unaware of their surroundings. They're just flabbergasted by this random talking... Uh, or random talking goblin, this random goblin. Okay, uh, I'll ask what that was for as one of them turns around and now they're standing back to back as this one's looking at Snooty and this one turns around and he goes, oh, oh, uh, and he sees the goblin dog standing there. What would you like to, what was the performance check for, Desi? I'm going to roll over. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm actually as a goblin dog, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna roll over. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look as friendly as, you know, I'm just, I'm gonna do this trick. All right. Dixie, are you gonna just let things keep panning out, or do you have anything you're gonna do to support this experience? Uh, can I just, uh, sort of sprint through the door and, and, and sort of scream, That's my dog! That's my dog! <laughs> Come back here! <laughs> And then uh, can I can I point at them and act kind of like a like a really a really disgruntled pet owner and kind of just be like, I am I am very angry. You 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 are you trying to kidnap my dog? That's my dog. <laughs> dog, dog. There's there's a dog here. <laughs> Goblin chaos go. Um. Dixie, Five. give me a performance Five. roll, please. Oh, shit. Yeah, sorry. Didn't think yeah. about it. I want to see how convincing it is. It's got to be pretty convincing. You know, I do performance for, for a living. Well, that definitely is reflected in that roll, for sure. But we're going to see how badly... Um, 
the okay well they're a little <laughs> like why is the dog like this it's fucked up and this this guy so this guy over here is like that dog looks fucked and he's like disgusted by desi's appearance because you're you're not a normal dog you're a goblin dog and just to reiterate for everybody at home uh let me just bring Matt my dog on, sc <laughs> on screen that's what a goblin dog looks like so if you're kind of like what the fuck um he's having that reaction too so as he looks at the goblin dog and is just disgusted the other guy is just like i what um i i guess uh what the hell and Dixie, are you, like, running in to, like, be right in front of them? Where would you like to be as a result of this, like, performance? Uh, kind of just on my way over over to to the dog. I'm trying to get uh, Desi out of the situation. <laughs> Snooty, uh, do you stay standing where you are, or do you kind of move in a little bit and uh, taking advantage of the situation at all? Uh, as he turns his head, she's going to go <laughs> and rush, like, up to him, like, really close and look up. And yeah. just be like, I, you were talking to me, not her. What, what? Yeah. Pay attention to me! And then wax him with the stick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> while, while Snooty's doing that, I want to try casting uh, Illusionary House again. <laughs> uh, just around them if I can. Oh no. <laughs> the non combat illusion caster has suddenly become the ultimate snare. <laughs> Fuck. Desi, what about you? What's your what's your reaction to these this this situation? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, that's a lot of options. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna go over to, uh, Dix, just like, I am just like a normal dog. Just a normal dog. Okay. Uh-huh, just, just a normal dog. And I'm gonna start sniffing this guy's boot. Can <laughs> I, can I roll for thwap? Oh, yes, yes. Going on? Um, you'll have advantage because it's technically a surprise attack as well. Uh -huh. All right, that's definitely going through this man's AC, and now he has to make a defense or a roll for it, uh, which I believe is a fortitude. Yes, that's what it says uh, on the stick. You attack the weapon you're wielding, targeting one creature within your reach. Roll the attack roll for the weapon you are using, and compare the result to the target creature's AC to determine the effect. A success, but you deal double damage. You deal damage according to the weapon. I don't see anything about them rolling. Let me... Uh, they're supposed to do a roll for if it makes them throw up when you hit them with it. I don't um, see it on here at all. That's okay. Staff of Barf. Uh, maybe I need to activate a little thing on it for you. No, it's identified. Strange. Uh, any creature struck by this staff must make a DC 14 fortitude save. If failed, they suffer two sickness as they vomit profusely. If critically failed, they suffer three sickness instead and vomit, violent, vomit, violently vomit. Okay, cool. So you, you run up with the bar stick. The bandit has to make a, a, a fortitude save. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, yep, yeah, okay, just making sure I have everything on my ducks in a row here. It, of course it would be his worst stat. Well, <laughs> that's, uh, which one is sickness again? Hold on, let me, uh, 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 there it is, sickened for two levels. <laughs> She's literally just going, whap, whap. Pay attention to me! Whap, whap! <laughs> As that's happening, Dixie, you've erected the uh, barrier around them, and that will become relevant when they interact with it, but you you guarantee create this invisible barrier. So until they actually interact and are aware of it, they won't have to roll, but once they are aware of it being around them, they'll roll to see if they disbelieve the illusion or not. Uh, do you, we did the roll beforehand first, right? Yes, but... 
Uh, sure. I we can. I can. I can do that for both of them. Fine if you don't want to. I was just no, curious. No. It's all good. It's all good. It's a will save, I believe. Uh yeah, and they have to hit just... eighteen or higher. Oh joy. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is up. I don't think the bandit gets to choose to do goblin bullshit. So this is awesome. <laughs> so the guy, the are you intending to do a little bit of bludgeoning to the bandit as well, Snooty? Were you intending to hit the bandit with, like, forceful damage, or is it just ultimately yeah, effective? Yeah, it, it was both. It was both. That's the reason why I rolled the way I did. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Fair, fair. Uh, roll your damage for the stick, then. Okay. There we go. I mean, that tracks for just a basic-ass stick, but... Take it! <laughs> um... Oh shit, he should have a different stat profile due to certain modifications. Okay, well, for now, what we'll do is we'll uh, modify this here, and I'll update it as needed. Um, as that's happening, and Dixie, you've erected your invisible wall, and uh, they, for the time being, until they have an opportunity to try and do anything about it, they believe that it's there when it becomes relevant. So just keep that in mind for yourself, because I might forget. Uh -huh. Desi... Is there anything you want to do? Because as Snooty comes up and is like, hey, pay attention to me, and is like smacking this bandit, all of a sudden he just stops what he's doing and just goes, ugh, ugh, and because he's wearing a face cover, he just vomits all inside the thing that's covering his mouth as he staggers against the wall, like deflecting the blows from the stick, and the other bandit just goes, what the fuck, as he turns around to hear him. Throwing up and retching into his mask. So, Desi, what do you want to do? As this guy is completely distracted by that. I'd like to make a trip attack because I am a gobbledoggo and I have the ability. All right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is going to be too good. This is going to be too good. <clears throat> Let's see here. So I'm going to bite this guy's leg. Mm -hmm. And make a trip attack. So I'm going to roll for that first. Let me grab this that hoose bit real quick. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. I have to make a... Uh, I don't have a sheet for that. What do you need to roll? Uh, just a d20 plus... Uh... Yeah, okay. one second. I got this. Okay. Uh... Also, Lorana, thank you very much for the resubscription. Very appreciated. Uh, jump. Oh. Uh, hmm. uh, you have oh. to do slash. Uh... Hmm. Goblin bullshit go? Well, what what is the role for? Is it to beat an AC or...? Yeah, it's to beat an AC. Okay, okay. I'm pretty sure I don't beat that guy's AC. So... Uh, with a 14? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Goblin bullshit go! go! Oh! Ooh. All right. Um, however, I'm it is. A, this boot. I was about to say, sorry, you have a surprise attack here, so you would get faded or whatever the hell it's called in Pathfinder. So roll again and take the highest of the two. Oh. Okay. Yes. Rip. <laughs> Rip. I'm chewing on a shoe. All right, your reflection is not visible either. <laughs> ah, excellent. Well, I chew viciously on this man's shoe. All right. So okay. as that and happens, then... I'll go ahead. Yes, what were you going to say? <clears throat> I didn't do damage to him, but he is in contact with me. Uh, they have to make a DC 12 fortitude save. Oh? Uh-huh. Uh, goblin okay. dogs... The goblin dogs have a thing called a uh, dander. <laughs> uh, a goblin dog's dander is highly irritating to all creatures save those with goblinoid subtype. A non-goblinoid creature damaged by a goblin's bite who deals damage to a goblin dog with a natural weapon or an armor attack. Or, I'm sorry. A non-goblin creature damaged by a goblin's dog's bite 
who deals damage to a goblin dog with a natural weapon on arm attack or who otherwise comes in contact with a goblin goblin dog including attempts to grapple or ride the creature must make a dc12 fortitude save or break out an itching rash so he hasn't technically struck you yet so just keep that oh, in but mind I'm for when he does him. yeah i'll allow it you're shaking your dander all over the place i'll give a roll for him uh -huh. to see if he has it just helps with the effect, the itchiness. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Um, so, what was it? A fortitude save? Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. Well. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you know what? A creature affected by this rash takes a negative two penalty to dexterity and charisma for one day. Oh my god. <laughs> Is there a status that's related to the itching? I don't think so. I think I just have to do that manually. If he just pulled out fucking blue eyes, white dragon, and now you're just having to, like, figure shit out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what? You know what this encounter is, is making me feel like I need to do is I need to do this, and then I need to do uh, more this. Papa Nurgle smiles upon us today in battle. So, meanwhile, as these two individual, masked individuals here are now completely embroiled in goblin shenanigans, as this guy is, like, he's smacking him with a stick and he's vomiting into his fucking coverings, and this guy suddenly is, like, the dog is pulling at his leg, and he's like, Hey, stop it! Stop it! I just, ah! Ah! <laughs> it's, like, scratching himself all over, and they're both, like, he starts to move, and it and stops, and he's like, what the fuck? And he, can, <laughs> he can't... It's like, why is there a wall here? There isn't supposed to be a wall here. <laughs> As that's all unfolding. From upstairs, like, through the building, the chaos is drifting up the stairs. So the Shroud, as she's been making her way through the area, Newt just kind of stops for a second with you and goes, Did you, did you hear that? That sounded like a bunch of panic about a dog, and now somebody's screaming. I think I hear retching, too. Go on, go, go! Newt will turn into Goblin Dog and start running towards sound at full speed. <laughs> mm. Alright, alright. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, so you're on the third floor right now, so the best way to get down there would probably be this stairwell from where you've been sneaking around, but we've also got the main steps, so we'll say that Shroud probably was taking the side steps. Ends up bringing you over to the second floor. Boop, 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 like that. Um, and then I am going to move this over here. And I'm going to say that the, the I made a boo-boo with this map before, but technically the entryway to the dungeon is supposed to be in the armory, which doesn't make a damn bit of sense to me, but that's how Paizo designed it. So I guess the, whoever made this jail was a drunk. <laughs> so technically you can go down these stairs as you're coming down. So it, the, the Shroud starts running to keep up with you, but you're much faster than she is now. So as you start running down those stairs, uh, let me go ahead and show you what you come across. So. Hey, um, are you trying to be sneaky uh, about this at all? Um, or are you uh, just charging in, Newt? Um, I mean, I I haven't been rolling very well, but uh, you know, we'll we'll find out. Let's we'll, we'll let the dice decide how sneaky Newt's being. There you go. That's your answer. <laughs> 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 She's being about as sneaky as a five. <laughs> So as you come charging at, around this way, you just barrel through the door, making no effort to see undetected or, like, visible. And you crash the door open to see two things. One, uh, there is a... Oops. Uh, there's a guard on the floor lying, in, like, look, clutching his throat, who looks like he's been murdered. And another man standing over top of him with a blood slick knife who's just kind of, like, has been cleaning it and is keeping an eye out. And he stops in what he's doing as you come barreling through this door in front of him. So, Newt, how do you want to react to this discovery? Um... Can I cast spells in gob in when, um... A druid's yeah. in wild shape? Yep. Yeah, you're, you're basically still able to act in that manner. Um... How 
How does heightened work, by the way? I am not entirely sure, to be honest. I haven't looked into it. I'm still trying to get my head around all the way spellcasting works in Pathfinder, because I'm not used to Pathfinder 2e. So, for the time being, I'm afraid I don't have the answer to that. <laughs> okay, I'll just leave it to Newt's crazy things ability. Crazy normal spellcasting, whether it gets heightened. Yes. Uh, gotcha. Newt's is gonna... Uh, like, alright, so here's what I'm imagining. The guy sees a goblin dog come, like, running a foot off the ground towards him. Oh, yeah, that's right, you're still hovering. Uh, and its mouth's gonna open and open up, and he's just gonna hear, <laughs> hear, uh, Water, I choose you! And then a, is there any, hold on, I don't need water to be around, but is there any source of water around for story? Telling, um... Like, no, you would literally just be doing fucking, like, water yeah. blast from your mouth gonna, like a yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, I'm gonna do a high, basically a Hydra Blast out of the dog's mouth. Okay. Because <laughs> the wording <laughs> of your spell doesn't specifically require water to be present, yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. gonna use Hydraulic Push. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Goblin Dog gonna vomit water attack like a Pokemon at him. I need to animate this moment somehow in the future, <laughs> because it's just like... Like, door blows open, everybody stops, <laughs> then you're just like, blah, <laughs> shoot water <laughs> in its direction. Don't forget the that Newt says, water, 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 I choose you. <laughs> uh, okay, so just keep in mind that you use that first level spell uh, and can't use it again until you've taken a rest. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, you click on it? That's handy. Yeah. So you okay. have to make a ranged attack spell roll, so click on it and use the roll. So bring the spell up in the in the thing and then roll for the attack roll, as it would give you. Alright, yep, that beats his AC, so uh, roll the damage for the attack. Well, before I roll damage, chat, can you roll a d20 to find out? Mmm, right, right, what extra effects. Can I get an extra exhalation mark d20, please, from chat to see what the... the the water beam attack ends up doing an extra, if anything. Uh, just, just anybody exclamation mark D20 lowercase. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Yeah, that's, that's decent. Do you want to have that capped or do you want to call some goblin bullshit for the chat? Goblin bullshit, go! All right, uh, one more, uh, one more for all of you, uh, pretty please, if you could, uh, in chat, just another exclamation mark d20, and meanwhile, I'll see what effect applies to our little goblin friend here. You become a much larger goblin dog. <laughs> oh, excellent, a three instead. Perfect, oh, perfect. No. So okay. you... He it, it has a lesser effect, so roll the damage for it, and I'll tell you how it's lessened by a result. But go ahead and uh, give me the damage roll for the spell, please. All right, 13. So it's going to be reduced a bit on the damage front for what he takes as he gets slammed back because, like, you go... And it's more of, like, a big just blast of water rather than it is a solid jet. So you... The way it interprets is you go... Uh, what did you call out? I choose you. Water, I choose you. Okay, so you say, water, I choose you. And then you inflate to double the size and your mouth just expands. And he goes, like, he's standing there looking around like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then you just blow this massive blob of water out of your mouth. And sent, because it knocks him ten feet back, he'll take extra bludgeoning for impacting against the wall. And he's just like, blah, fucking falls to the ground. Just... <laughs> Completely stoked and very much so, just like, what, what has just occurred? <laughs> so, as this is coming to pass, I want. Uh, meanwhile, back over here. Now, what we're gonna have happen is Vachetti kicks up, comes in the door. He sees that this is all going on, and now it's time for him to get involved. So he comes running in, and he grabs hold of the guy who's like throwing up, and <laughs> he's gonna try to grab him by the neck. So I'm going to give him an athletics roll. All right, that's Vachetti's roll. The bandit is going to have disadvantage, 
And he's weakened by his sickness, so he's going to do um, an athletics in response here that will also have lower. Wow! <laughs> so Machete reaches out to grab this guy by the neck, and the guy pulls the front of his thing down and throws up all over Machete. So Machete is, like, trying to grab hold of him, and he's just goes... Huh. <laughs> and Machete lets go and is like, what the, oh, what the fuck? Oh, God. And now he needs to make a roll. <laughs> he barely prevents himself from turning to Dixie and just, like, stops himself from throwing up all over Dixie at the last minute. So he just leans in and goes, Whoop. You were going to do that to me if the roll... I was. <laughs> it's okay, you got a wide brim hat. Uh, the is for feeding, not for throwing up on. Holy <laughs> shit. And the bandit is now just kind of like stumbling around like, oh, but due to the way that Sickened works in this instance, he's going to lose most of his action capability and be very... Um, the vomiting basically costs him a turn of action beyond like that kind of response. And the bandit over here is like, okay, I am not dealing with this fucking dog on me right now. But because he's itchy, what was the, the modifier again? I don't have a way of applying it to his sheet right now, so just remind me, Desi. Can you repeat that? My I was plugging in my headset. What was the goblin pox uh, modifier that affects him? Uh, negative two charisma, or wait, yeah, negative two penalty to dexterity and charisma. Oh my god. For right. one day. So his attack is basically like garbage. Um, I am going to make a roll for him on the dexterity side of things with the modifier that we normally have, blah, 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 etc, etc. So it's actually, wow, that's actually pretty shitty, uh, for comparatively normally. So we're going to go ahead and, boop, we'll do his roll to see if he even does anything to you. That does not go through your AC. So he pulls out a rather vicious looking dagger and starts trying to stab you in the head, and as he goes for it, you just keep moving his leg around. So every time he stabs down, you just jerk him around, and he's like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> like, trying to stab you in the head. And uh, as that's going on, uh, Dixie, what do you want to do next, now that they seem to be stuck in your invisible box of magical illusion bullshit? I... I'm not... <sighs> I'm gonna have to be... I'm gonna level with you. I'm not entirely certain what I can do at this point. I mean, you can punch him. I... I can't... Do you think that'll go well? Alright. I'm gonna... Um, I'm gonna punch him. So, hold on, hold on. When you hit the unarmed strike, you hit the strike button, but you would change the, uh... it to on for strength. So you turn off dexterity and turn on for strength with the roll. Where is that? So if you hit the strike plus eight on your unarmed attack on your sheet under actions, do you see it? There it is. Yeah, yeah. so just disable dexterity and turn on strength and then roll for it. How do I disable dex and turn on strength? <laughs> you, you just you, told me this. Yeah, turn off dexterity, then turn on strength. It's the top two options in the roll. I hit... Oh, okay. Yeah, it won't let you turn on strength until you turn off dexterity is the influence. Alright. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. I love it. Uh, would you wish to call Coblin bullshit, or are you good? No. <laughs> Alright. The best strength-related role I think I have ever received. <laughs> you bap him in the leg, just being like, oh, like, joining in on the leg playing up the leave my dog alone aspect as you punch into the bandit. And if you want to, you can make a second attack, although it's a multi-attack penalty, so you would hit map minus four and then switch it again to strength <laughs> if you want. Sure. Let's let's do a second hit. Why the fuck not? Hey. <laughs> I kill him? He doesn't even register the attack. Like, he's just, like... It's like he doesn't feel anything. Like, there's an initial, like, bat, but he's a little more concerned with the dog, like, pulling at his leg than he is with the small red goblin who's basically, like, hitting him with, uh... 
what equates to a marshmallow. Also, Fiona Floofy, thank you very much for the follow. Um, so Snooty, as this guy's throwing up and Vachetti's like, Oh god, what the fuck? What would you like to keep doing? Would you want to keep hitting him with the stick or do you want to do something else? Oh, 100%. She's going to whack him again and be like, Whoosh! All right, so Pay the... attention to me! <laughs> due to the sickened state, give me another roll, please. Of, uh... Another... Do I do an advantage? Cause... Yes, yes. Because of his sickened yeah. state. You give me another attack roll. There you go. Now he needs to make another save to see, oh my god, the sickened... Oh no. Well... <laughs> <laughs> he gets Snooty. another two. He's like, <laughs> he's like raising his hands up to stop, and he's just like, "What's wrong with me?" And he's trying to plead with you, Snooty, to stop hitting him with the stick. And you're like, whack, 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 and he goes, "What the? Oh, oh, who, who, who? <laughs> throws up all over the floor as he's stumbling with more sickness. So his two sickness is removed and then immediately added again, and he loses another action round. So, <laughs> this is the most. Pay attention to me, and then I will stop. Oh my god, this is the most goblin-appropriate combat experience I think I've ever seen. <laughs> also, thank you, Peter, for the subscription to Goblin Titty. <laughs> Oh, uh, meanwhile, Newt, uh, the bandit over here is gonna get up and stumble to his feet and be like, Oh, you fucking, what the hell? And he's gonna pull out a hand crossbow. And he's gonna fire it in your direction. Uh, so let's go ahead and give him that circumstantial bonus there. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me, these guys are incompetent. Um, so, Newt, what would you like to do uh, as you are given a free action as a result of his critical failure? Uh, is this the guy that got knocked down? Yes. Don't I get to do something while he's getting up? Uh, you, you do, but, like, his response to you bursting through and shooting him, this is oh, the yeah, reaction yeah, yeah, of yeah. that. So he's, okay. don't worry, um, everything he's trying to do has fucked up horribly and it was going to be your turn next anyway. So go uh, ahead and do whatever you want to do to him, but you also get an uh, extra action. I gotta see the. Uh, how close is he? Um, he's like ten feet away. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, roughly ten feet from like the border distance of your tokens. Um. Okay. Um, I'm gonna move. Can I move five feet forward? And then I'm going to do Puff of Poison. Sure. 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 Puff of Poison. I'm going to vomit. I got, I'm going to go. I'm going to be like, <laughs> Poison attack! And just go, and just breathe a bunch of air, poison air at him. All right. Can I get an exclamation mark D20 from chat to see how well the poison effect uh, applies as well from her spell casting? So just somebody in chat, exclamation mark D20, lowercase. Meanwhile, I'll move you a bit closer, Newt. Uh, and he needs to make a fortitude save. Okay, that's gonna suck for him. Fortitude is his terrible stat. Nice, a 15. Alright, I'll roll. Alright, he fails that. Uh, the puff of poison is... Uh, so, he takes persistent damage poison too, but if he failed it, the target takes full initial and persistent uh, damage, so... Oh, so he I takes a persistent poison too, and he takes your spellcasting mod in. Yeah, yeah. Wait, that's a plus nine. You do nine poison to him, and now he's horribly poisoned. Yeah. Uh. Jesus. Alright, and now you can follow up with something else if you want. Was it, was it spell heightened or anything? Um, as it comes out, like, pouring out, um, he just cut- you know what? Tell you what, I'll, I'll help, well, there, uh... There, there's the roll of the, the poison damage initial. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, weird. It should have a, an equivalency... Oh. oh, I guess your modifier is different from... Okay, anyways, I thought that was a plus nine. Alright, I'll have to take a look at why it's making that math, because I thought... Target. Uh, it says target takes poison damage equal to your spell casting modifier and persistent damage too. 
All right, well, whatever. The interpretation, I can wing it. Uh, for now, however, because you're covering him in this poison gas, he's also going to take another fortitude save, which at least he... He keeps himself from falling to the ground choking, but he slumps against the wall. So, like, you splash him back into the back of the wall. He pulls out a hand crossbow, tries to fire it at you, and then you just walk up and bleh, into his face. And he just slumps against the wall and drops his hand crossbow and barely keeps himself standing upright. He looks like he's very in a bad state at the moment, but you have another follow-up action if you want to do anything. So you could do another um, cantrip, you could do something else entirely, whatever you'd like to do, just let me know. Um, is that, what is... Hmm, actually, I know. Yeah? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> he's gonna go, why do I cheese you again? And I'm gonna do a gale blast. <laughs> Vomit more water on him. Um, technically that's air, not water. Alright, air. I'm gonna vomit I'm gonna I'm gonna burp at him. <laughs> Can I get another exclamation mark D20 in chat, please? As the many exciting cursed ways of casting spells of Newt needs to be kind of encapsulated here, so somebody else in chat, exclamation mark, okay, all right, the three. Um, he needs a fortitude save. He needs a fortitude save? Ah. Why? Why are you abusing this poor man's worst fucking stat? <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. Oh my god, your, 19, your spell DC is 19, unless it has a specific fucking... Oh my god, it was a 19 fortitude save? How was he ever gonna pass that? <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, at this point, do you care if it's lethal or non-lethal? I want to know before I tell you what happens. Um, oh, I can do a non-lethal with it? Yeah, I'm, yes. just, I'm just knock him out. <laughs> All right. Is so it also you... knocks him back, I believe? Yes, yes. No, knock... yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, don't worry. There's <laughs> enough overlapping <laughs> elements of bludgeoning suffering that this man is unconscious to every degree possible. So you... <laughs> You blow his ass back, so you you come through the door and you're like, blah! And he's like, what the fuck? He tries to shoot you, you poison him, he's like, <laughs> and he comes forward and you let out this gust of wind from a belch that just sends him smashing into the wall, and he just <laughs> flops on the ground completely unconscious. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, so I guess that's uh, unconscious. There we go. Boop, and all the modifiers that come with it. So for the time being, that guy's not doing anything beneficial. Meanwhile, back over here, um, Desi, what would you like to do, if anything, in this instance? This guy's very much so uh... on, on the ropes, just barfing his guts out, but this dude is fairly unta unharmed, aside from having your fleas, essentially. I am going to try to trip him again. All right, go ahead and give me the same roll. Yeah. What do, do you remember? He has a negative to AC. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bravo, <Bushiko>. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> The goblin who uh, moves at half the... <laughs> you are now slowed as if you are stuck in magical molasses. Okay. I will attack a second time. Because <coughs> I have three actions. Yep. Yeah, you can make a multi-attack penalty, so remember to apply minus okay. five unless you have something that overrides that. Uh... Okay. Okay. Huh. <laughs> Well, you'd also add your modifier from when you rolled, but it's still a miss, so... Oh! Yeah, so you, you add minus five into the calculation, so you take your modifier for the attack, and then you would do minus five. Okay. So, uh... That misses. Do you want to make one more attempt at minus ten? Uh... Which for you would be a minus, I believe, six? No. I'm going to spit the shears out. Uh-huh. And I'm just gonna pour caltrops at this guy's feet. 
because he's stuck in the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's horrible. I'm just, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Uh, he has to pass a DC 14 acrobatics test. Uh huh. With a negative. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. All right. So, circumstantially, he's at a minus two on that front already. Roll. Wow. Wait. No, it should have been minus. What are you doing? Incorrect. What did he need to pass again for the number? Sorry. A 14. Uh, all right, five, six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. 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 What's the effect if he fails? He takes 1d4 piercing damage and persistent damage bleed 1. A creature taking persistent bleed damage from a Calchak takes a 5 minus 5 foot penalty to its speed. Uh, spending one interact action to pluck the caltraps free reduces the DC to stop the bleeding. Once a creature takes damage from caltraps, enough caltraps are ruined that other creatures moving in the square are safe. Deplete caltraps can be salvaged and reused if no creature took damage from them. Otherwise, enough caltraps are damaged that they cannot be salvaged. All right, so he's stepping around in this like invisible box, like you're t pulling on his leg, and then you spit out the shears and just get up and start chucking caltrops at his feet, and he's completely bewildered. He's like, "What the fuck is this? What the fuck is happening right now?" And he's like panicking and like stepping all over the place. And as he's doing so, he's stepping on these caltrops, and his feet are bleeding. And he's just like, "What the fuck?" And he's like smacking into the invisible wall, and he's like, "I don't understand." <laughs> Surrender now, and we will show you mercy! <laughs> Dixie, what would you like to do as the shenaniganry is unfolding? I'm gonna try... Um... Can I... Uh, how much... How much do I have for, like, actual spells? Uh, you basically can use... So here's the thing. Um... There's still more to this place, and there's a very... The, since we're getting close to about 20 minutes until we actually end the session, um, we will be picking this point up with the next session, so hopefully you're available next Sunday to join for one more no round. Um, but you'll have to consider, you have a limited amount of spell uses available right now. In fact, uh -huh. I'll, I'll say that you only really have uh, one left at this point for All this right. level, and... You've been able to regenerate the use of one use of illusory creature, but any time after that, you'll need to take uh, a roll to see if you can strain yourself enough to do it. But otherwise, um, you can basically get to do one first level, one second level, and infinite cantrips, because cantrips don't require a shitload of energy to do. All right. Well, I'm going to immediately waste this. I'm going to use illusory creature, <laughs> uh, and I'm going to create a uh, another goblin dog, basically. All right. Uh, and I'm going to sort of threaten uh, this 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 bandit that's already struggling for his dear fucking life with one of them, and kind of send another one after him. Uh, to 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 go get him. All right, all right. So you summon a goblin dog. <laughs> yep, you summon a goblin dog, which I will, for temporary reasons here, we'll just put it on the on the thing. And uh, it's oh be boy, like, he's beautiful. Ra ra ra! I am a goblin dog, and goblin dogs are medium. Is that re okay? Whatever. <laughs> I thought they'd be smaller, but that's cool. Uh, so yeah, your illusionary goblin dog starts biting at the uh, at the the guy here, and uh, you are down that level of spell casting for now. Uh, how long does it sustain for? I don't know. Do you want me to read it? I don't remember. I, I, I'm reading it for a second to just go over. It should have a... Sh just It's just something you sustain for a period until it's an interruption, I believe, so... Uh, yeah, the illusionary creature is basically a summons for you that just is dispelled when somebody eventually disbelieves it hard enough, more or less. <laughs> Crazy. <clears> hmm... <throat> Interesting, interesting. Okay, okay, and it's mental damage, so... <sighs> Alright, so makes it makes two attacks um, for against this guy, I guess, using the... It's your spellcasting modifier, which would be applied to it. 
So I don't think illusionary creature has like an attack option. Let me double check. I'll bring it up here. Yeah, it doesn't provide a button for that. So basically you're going to do slash roll 1d20 plus... I think your spellcasting mod is like... I thought it would be a plus 8, but it's giving me different... It's giving me conflicting statistics. So tell you what, let's go with the plus Wait, 4. For... Are you are you asking for my spell attack? Uh, the illusion to sustain your spell. Use your spell attack roll. Okay, so make your spell attack roll. So give me a d d twenty okay, plus eight, plus please. Eight. Yeah. Okay, well that's gonna hit. So roll me one d four plus four. All right. Okay, it was five. That's good. That's good. Um, do you want to make it attack again by chance? Uh, we can uh, just attack the one time for now. All right. Well, he's definitely not in a good state, but he's still standing as you've essentially. Uh, hmm, weird. I'm not sure why that isn't displaying on the roll log. Anyways, moving forwards, uh, you inflict five points of psychic damage on him from your illusionary goblin dog, and he's now turning around to be like, ah, my feet, what the fuck is this dog? And why am I trapped in a box? There's two um, of them now. This guy over here, very much so losing out on all of his turns and opportunities to do anything, and Vichetti is just gonna reach down and grab him as he's, like, throwing up everywhere, and he's just, he's throwing in the towel. So, Snooty, this guy has given up. Like, he's surrendered as hard as he can, as he's now just like, please, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so, do you want to keep hitting him, or do you want to help with the last guy? <laughs> She's going to climb over Vichetti, basically. And then as she's going through, she's going to whap his knees and go, You're not paying attention to me either! <laughs> <laughs> this guy over here? Yeah. Well, he's covered in Caltrops, Goblin Dogs, and fucking pissy illusionists, so go make another attack with advantage, please, because he's very much so not in a good position to... Yeah, alright, that'll I'm go through his AC. Muscle rolling the damage, he gets three! Alright, I'll roll his fortitude save. Oh no! <laughs> Let's just go ahead and... I think we can call this combat over. <laughs> if it was more of a serious combat, I would have had initiative rolls, but the way this all started <laughs> unfolding, I just couldn't help it. I just couldn't... Oh my god, that was the goofiest way to uh, goofiest ass way to deal with these guys. <laughs> Holy fuck! What a what an attack! What an experience! So the bandit, the bandit, the bandit over here is just like, uh, uh, and the other guy's looking over at him and like, uh, and they're just throwing up and then this pile of cantrips to get or caltrops together in an illusionary box and they're both just throwing up and throwing their heads in the air like please stop the like lying throwing up on each other and just they're the most pathetic pile of like they're not fighting anymore they're they would easily be taken out by any kind of like punch or kick at this point and have just completely thrown in the towel and meanwhile, this guy is just fucking knocked the hell out. And uh, by this point, <laughs> by this point, the shroud comes down the stairs. Because what you did, Newt, was so quick that she now just now is like coming around the corner, and she sees water, and <laughs> like this guy's <laughs> wet and kind of like covered in dust and and all kinds of shit and unconscious. And there's cracks in the wall, and she just stops and goes, "What?" What the fuck did you do to him? I knocked him out. He's sleepy now. She just goes over and like kicks him. And she just looks at you and also is like... Are you still in goblin dog form, by the way? Or are you like, did you revert back? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I never changed back. All right, so you talk to her as the goblin dog and she just gives yeah, you yeah. this like disturbed look. And then it's like, did you, did you get bigger? Are you calling me fat? 
No, 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 no. I like. I'm. I'm gonna say that the way your weight increased is you turned into like a more muscular like version of a goblin oh, okay, dog. Okay. So like, you turned into like the bodybuilder equivalent of a muscle to, uh, a goblin dog oh. in appearance only. You don't gain bonuses to any of those stats. Um, but you definitely look like one of those like hulky, weighty, like ripped kind of people who have the extra body weight. So. I'm yeah. keeping that theme because the last time you were affected with this too. So <laughs> she's just like, "Well, you, uh, sister, you look like you've been kind of working out and eating a few extra." Anyway, um, is he dead? No, just sleeping. She kneels down and checks his pulse and goes, "Oh, what are you doing to him?" We must go, and I'm gonna start running towards the noises or the others <laughs> one. So, Newt rounds the corner, and the shroud also follows. And as they come around the corner, uh, the bandits are now very much so incapacitated and just like, <laughs> stop throwing up. <laughs> as they're lying in a pile, crying, and just <laughs> they're so pathetic at this point. There's just vomit soaked caltrops everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dixie, your goblin dog, as far as I'm reading it, until I'm able to say otherwise, is just with you right now as an illusionary summons until it becomes right. desummoned. So, as you're all standing around, Snooty, you're standing triumphantly over these two guys. How do you want to handle your newfound godlike vomit powers? <laughs> she holds the stick up, making sure not to touch anyone, and she looks to the sky and goes, I am a god. Or something. I don't know what that means. I made them throw up. I am magic. Uh, ah, you are. I put. I gave him the funny rash, and uh, I put the sharp uh, bits under his feet. Me. <laughs> ah, Newt. Ah, Newt, you were not here. We we beat up two peoples. There was a person in the hallway over there with the knife, and I beat him up. Ah, oh, oh. so wait, we all beat people up. Uh, so I'm still a goblin dog. Uh, gotcha, understandable. So the dog, goblin, goblin dog is having this conversation, and Machete and Shroud are just staring at each other like, uh, <laughs> fucking goblins. Oh, uh, so as this is going on, Dixie, do you want to do anything, or are you content with the fact that you just were very helpful in containing these individuals? Uh, I am kind of just, like, thinking to myself, and kind of questioning why I just spent all of this time helping these people that I kept telling myself I didn't care about. Uh, so I'm just, just let me have my, like, midlife, or not midlife, it's not a midlife crisis, it's just a crisis. Let me have my crisis in, in, in peace. I mean, you're like... How are you? A 20-year-old goblin. It is your midlife crisis or a goblin. Oh, God. Well, uh, it, the the crisis is unrelated to my age, and therefore I I don't I don't think it uh, counts. All right. So as you guys are all standing there and taking a look at all these, these, these fallen people on the ground, they finally stopped throwing up and are just lying there kind of like quietly sobbing to themselves. And uh, Machete just kind of looms over them and cracks his knuckles. And he says, Now, <clears throat> I know you didn't enjoy what just happened there, thanks to my lovely friends here. And he leans down and he goes, But if you don't tell me what's going on here, you are going to wish all you were getting was vomit and spiky little metal things in your feet. And they both look up and are just kind of like... <laughs> and, and the one guy goes, Okay... Like, it's not worth it. I was just hired onto this job as extra hands to keep watch. I didn't sign up for this. But whatever this is. And he's like gesturing to all the goblins around him. And he's like, please, please just let us go. We'll, we'll be out of your hair. We're not going to cause any trouble. Just, <laughs> I'm tired of throwing up. <laughs> Does anyone have a reaction to this or like what they're saying? Snooty, uh, hearing that does like a, a fake out with about to hit him with the stick <laughs> 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 this is fun 
Please. Ah. Please, no more throwing up. Please, I'll say anything. I'll say anything. Just don't do that anymore, please. Okay. I... Uh, snitty. Snitty. Yeah. If he does anything funny, hit him. But maybe... maybe Yay! Maybe, maybe let him not throw up, you know, just for nothing. But if he work, you know, if he wiggles his nose wrong, you slap him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got, I got the stuff. And she uh, holds up the uh, thing and she, like, uh, taps the ground twice with it. I got the stuff. So, uh, start. And she's gonna pull out a potion of minor healing and hand it to the dude that was uh, sitting on the, the, the cow traps in the box. <laughs> uh, yeah, here you go. Uh, drink this. You'll be fine. It will also make the rash go away. <laughs> he looks at you with gratitude and just slams it back and he has a little bit of a uh, uh, like feeling of just like drinking anything after all that and then just goes oh. Oh, thank you. I'm really... Oh, oh, that was unpleasant. And he, like, puts his hand down and goes, Ah! And he, <laughs> he pulls the caltrop out of his hand. Yeah, no, floor is still spiky. Uh, you know, we're not going to clean that up until uh, you guys get handled for the jail. Sorry. Uh, the Shroud also looks over at all of you and says, There's another one over there down the hallway that Nit took care of. And she looks down at the others and says, how many more of you are in the building? And he just goes, I, there's another six in the jail below. They've been trying to get the cell open. It's been, it's been hard work. There's been an effort to redouble the things that we were dealing with down here before the last time we, we we've been a hit a snag and I had to kill, help kill one of the guards who came patrolling inside the building, and... Oh, God, I'm gonna... Oh, God, I'm gonna be sick. And they're just, like, sitting there both trying their best not to throw up. Uh, does anyone have anything else they want to say or, like, inquire with these guys? Uh, why were you even here? Uh, the one guy looks up and he goes... Oh, we were hired. Oh, we were hired by a group. We were extra additions to be to lookouts for the the core group. There's a the six of them are downstairs taking care of what we were hired to do here. Um, and he just kind of looks at the other guy and the other guy. They like have a look of like, should we really be saying? And he just goes, Oh, you know what? Fuck it. No jobs with this kind of thing. We'll hit a free Titus. Uh. Oh. oh. Uh, okay, um, thank you. Uh, I... <clears throat> oh, sorry. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. I'm going to just sit down and pull my uh bag out. And I'm just going to quietly start working on modifying a bomb. Mm-hmm. All right, and what was your modification attempting to be there? Uh, so I have poison bombs, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm going to add the addition because I can make any bomb do smoke as well as being, uh, you know, poison. I want to see if I can make basically uh, a poison gas. Already what it was? Hmm. Isn't that already what it was when you grabbed it? Ah, uh, yes. But if I add the uh, smoke, if I add the smoke bomb effect to a bomb, it creates thirty cubic feet. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Interesting. All right. So you're starting to immediately modify a bomb. Newt, is there anything you want to do in this moment, or are you oh. good with like everything? Um, I don't want it to I... cause. Oh. Sorry. You know what? Newt, go first. I'll. Yeah. I'll... Shouldn't we go to cell? Ah, uh, yeah. Shroud looks over at you and says, Hey, I think it's best that we go down there and deal with the people before whatever they're trying to do happens. We were going down there anyways with Big Brother Vachetti, so that's perfect. You know, kill two... Kill two frog with one rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, Dixie, what about you? Anything? Uh, anything that kind of like stands out uh, as something you'd want to do in this moment? Uh, I just want to ask them. Uh, why? Why should we forgive you if you if you killed those those innocent men? Pachetti like turns and nods his head and he goes, "You know, that's a very good point. I don't think that uh, murder is something I'm actually going to allow you to get the hell away with." As I am the jailer here, he cracks his knuckles and again, and he says, "But tell you what, for the time being, I'm going to take you and your friends. We're going to put you in a nice, safe location where you can't get anywhere, and they'll make sure you have a fair trial. And because you're being so cooperative, he leans in and he says, "I won't break your fucking legs." And they just kind of nod at each other. <laughs> And he stands up and dusts his hands and goes, Right, well, Vichetti is a lot soberer now. And I am not looking forward to whatever is in store down below, so... Is there anything else you two can tell us before we head downstairs? And the one guy just kind of looks at the other and he goes, Well, um... Well, there is one thing. It's, um... He just kind of looks a little, like, startled about it. And he says, There is a bit of a, a weird... Uh, thing that happened when the rest of them went down there. Uh, we were working under the... Uh, you, you see, we, 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 we were employed under the uh, 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 Titus's cousin, um, uh, Adam Oscarnetti, and uh, we had received the go-ahead that the key phrase was delivered to his wife and uh, began our planning uh, for the, 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 the extraction. And, uh, well, they turned into things. I don't really know what, but when they went down there, they made sure that they were prepared, and as part of it, all those six turned into some kind of... Well, they looked like rats. Ah. Uh. Rats? Yeah. I don't ask too many questions. I was just hired on as extra help. But, uh... uh the, the features change, and they definitely look a lot more... rat-like. Ah. Uh. Okay, okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. Um... Thank you, that is very helpful. Uh... Snitty, I think you made these guys throw up too hard. They threw up all their Brian's. Have... Um, well, we do have... Ghoul. Maybe other uh, uh. spooky goblin tales are actual things. The shroud, uh. at, at the mention of this, she takes she she like lets out an audible frustrated sigh, and the shroud just kind of goes, "Oh, Adamar, fucking figured it was be him." Are any of you familiar with lichen poops? Uh. Uh, oh, 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 Snooty once saw, once saw, a uh, uh, werefrog. A werefrog? What? I don't yeah, think I've ever encountered something like that before. He Snooty, died where because was he was small. Uh, oh, wait, where <laughs> was frog? It was at Old Tribe. He died, though. Uh, uh, Rock yeah, go yeah. squeak. Oh. <gasps> uh. uh. He became an everywhere frog then. He became pancake. Oh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh. I am aware of what a like hand rope is. Yes. Uh, yes, with your 26, Desi, you are aware that certain variants of lycanthropy cause people to transform into much stronger. And uh, depending on what the the animal was that was the origin of the lycanthropy, it affects like elements of what uh, creates the mutation in them. Um, uh -huh. All your other, uh, you're not entirely aware of like um, if it's completely true or not because you know have have no experience engaging with or hunting these creatures. But uh -huh. you are aware that there is a myth that they are much more vulnerable to silver. Uh, in anything that uses that or like has like an element of silver in it so that's something uh. to consider but as the four of you along with Vachetti and Shroud stand over these two guys um, 
con contemplating what you're going to do about entering the dungeon below and dealing with these supposed six intruders who have come to recover Titus Scarnetti from the depths of the dungeons of Sandpoint, I think now is a perfect time for us to end tonight's. End no! Tonight. no. <laughs> But we can't go for like another three hours. But... <laughs> nope. Everyone will have to come back next time if you guys oh. want to see what happens. Uh, but Chazu the... just got here. Mm -hmm. yeah. As our party enters the dungeons of the garrison to see what has been happening in the efforts to free the uh, salacious tit Titus Scarnetti from his imprisonment for the works that he has done against the people of Sandpoint. I guess we'll find out what is to come of that encounter and how our players choose to deal with it and make use of their NPC allies for the time being, however. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. If you take a look at the chat, you can see all the links related to the people who joined in this session and the contributors for it. So if you could go ahead and give them some follows <clears throat> and some love, I would really, really appreciate that because they all work very hard to contribute to this and we all have a wonderful time together and uh, i hope you guys at home have a good time watching this and enjoying it too for those of you who might be watching from the youtube vods um or just the vods in general as well thank you so much for watching and enjoying our content we really appreciate it and if you could share it around that would be absolutely wonderful but for the time being another reminder to those of you at home um, one of the best ways to support our project is by just making contributions to subscriptions bits and donations to increase the goblin bullshit pool, which we used quite a lot of tonight. We are now down to 13 points, my goodness goodness, and that might need to be going up for the encounter for next week, because they can use four points to recover themselves from damage in combat if they so wish, but some of our spellcasters are low on some spells, and some of our goblins are already injured, so... Also, a little explanation to you, Trezu, because you don't know what the Goblin Bullshit Pool is. Essentially what it is, it's a reroll slash revive system. So goblins can use one point if they call Goblin Bullshit Go and reroll any roll. They have to accept the results, and they get a roll on the Goblin Bullshit table, which is a custom D100 table I wrote myself. So let's, for instance, if, uh, if Newt was like Goblin Bullshit Go... And then she would get a 62, which is she moves double her normal speed for an hour. So sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. We haven't had a nat 1 yet as well, so that's always going to be fun when that finally arrives. Um, but, uh, yeah, the goblin bullshit pool is a really fun mechanic that's added. And then also the goblins can use four points at a time from the pool to stabilize themselves when they're down on their death rolls. So they can make a death roll. If they fail it, they can say goblin bullshit go and automatically stabilize so they don't have to make death rolls. However, they will suffer the effects of the goblin bullshit pool, which is really funny as well because some of the results just do one point of damage, which would be enough to completely just knock them down again. So, <laughs> so it's, a, it's a gamble either way. But it's very amusing. So yeah, there you go. That's the summary of the Goblin Bullshit Pool. It's a fun time. It has created many narrative evolutions that have been fucking hilarious so far. And honestly, I think it's one of the best mechanics that we've ever introduced. And I would like to give a personal thanks to that underscore Gobby, who was the one who helped me brainstorm it in the first place when we started this project. Gobby is a very creative, uh, wonderful individual, and you guys can find him in the legacy document, tiny URL there. Unfortunately, had to he had to leave the project with us as he was playing uh, Boggy for the time being. Uh, there may be an opportunity in the future for him to return as a guest goblin, but for now, his uh, time commitments really unfortunately made it possible to have him continue. But I really appreciate his help in coming up with this thing because it has been one of the best mechanics we've ever used. So big props to that. And I just love... All the contributions from my wonderful players and all the viewers. You guys have made this very enjoyable and a great learning experience. And boy, howdy, do I have a hell of a portfolio to show people out there for this project as well. Because, like, shit, this is the highest quality thing I think I've ever done in my life. Because especially the art assets, thanks to the wonderful The Art of Ash, help create a very professional atmosphere that I am always tickled pink to use. So make sure that you guys follow the art of ash on twitch and also if you could be a, a darling and follow honey oni twitch as well 
she is the one who made her own like, reactive profile. So uh, that is a uh, another example of fantastic artwork there that mes meshes really well in her own style, but still works completely well with everybody else on the row. So I very much so appreciate that. And then please make sure that you also give Jasminian Devils a follow and some love because she is a very awesome, talented streamer, a lot of good company, and she comes up with hilarious fucking shit with her characters in D&D. I mean, all of these lovely ladies do, but like, <laughs> Jasmine's just got that, that, that special extra little bit of just like, what the fuck, goddammit, that always makes me laugh. So thank you, Jasmine. I really appreciate that. But before we go ahead and find a target to raid on out with, let me just check in with my players. And Effie, could you find us somebody to raid for when we finish our checkout? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. All right. So well, you find that raid target, and mm -hmm. then I will check in. So, honey, how did you enjoy once more playing Dixie? Honey? Hello? Shit! <laughs> you were muted, weren't you? I was muted. Sorry. No worries. I think, uh, I, I kind of figured that I would, like, not be able to help at all in a combat situation, but I feel like I just removed literally all of their escapes, and then, uh, Ash was just like, oh yeah, you're vomiting now. So that was pretty cool. Uh, they're just, like, stuck there, they can't go anywhere, they're just having the shit kicked out of them, it's like, this is great. <laughs> uh, and I'm very excited to continue pulling more bullshit like that. So, um, I'm all I can say is I'm really excited for the next episode, and I'm really, really thankful that you guys uh, have had me on. Um, it's been a really fun experience to uh, just be running D and D again. Honestly, I, it's been a really long time, and I really missed it. And being able to do it with uh, all of you guys has just been really fucking fun. You guys are all super great at this. You're all wonderful role players, artists, uh, DM people, streamers, etc., etc. Fucking so such a talented group of people. I just I'm, I'm super happy and flattered that uh, I'm being allowed to uh, take a part as a guest. It it it, it making me smile. Oh well, we appreciate having you, and I love your character concept. It's a it's an extra twinge on a on a on a pre-existing character that you've made your own handily, and I love I'm, her so much. I'm trying not to. Uh, I, I'm trying to like be annoying properly in universe, but not annoying to everyone else playing it. Uh, <laughs> I'd say you've been doing a pretty good job. It so is far. a it is a a balancing tightrope, uh, but I, I'm I'm really thankful that you guys have uh, let me be here. I'm I'm super happy about it. Of course. I love having your character here, and I look forward to even more future encounters with uh, Dixie, because we'll have you back next Sunday, and then after that we'll see where it becomes poignant for your continuous arrival, but since you're definitely being integrated into the town of Sandpoint, there is probably a very high chance that you will be appearing quite often. <laughs> I, I, I love doing it, uh, and I always have these these days off anyways. So Hell yeah. Super, appreciate super appreciated Blah, 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 blah. Absolutely. And just a reminder to those of you in chat, I've been working on this module as an attachment to Pathfinder 2e for an, as an extension for Pathfinder 2e that I'll be putting up for free on Foundry. So eventually this entire campaign and all of the elements that we used for it, aside from player character portraits, because that is very much so within our uh, wheelhouse of the campaign, it'll be up there for free for everybody to interact with. If you want to expedite that process, I would highly recommend that you guys join uh, my studio's Patreon, which is basically just Patreon slash Silver Kestrel Studios. You get access, every month you get access to the behind the scenes beta documentation for all our projects, and you also have access to a big pool of our art assets. So a lot of tokens and art portraits. I think we have something within the realm of 220 portraits now uh, that all have varying Roughly. tokens. Yeah, so like, Ooh, that's a fair bit of fucking token work that MWB has been putting out there. Uh, we don't make the player character portraits for any of our projects available because those are strictly specially available to people until I've had a conversation about how they want their character personally to be applied to any published works that I end up making. And it's also like that. When it comes to that level, I also need to have a little bit more of a discussion with Ash about like how she wants to approach royalties, blah, 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 etc., etc. But for the most part... 
yeah, if you guys want access to beta stuff and help support our projects, I would really appreciate people joining the Patreon because that extra income helps us a lot because I hate to say it, but money greases the wheels. And the more money people throw at us, the more the priorities will become based on what you find enjoyable in this stuff. So if we can get that support, that will help a lot. But I will keep, I'll stop advertising for now. And also any contributions made during the broadcast or sharing and telling people about what we do, especially with We End Goblins quickly becoming one of our like most front running projects. Um, that helps a lot too. So if you guys just have some extra money to throw around and want to throw it into the pool when we're doing a live broadcast, I would really appreciate that. And uh, the monthly subscription on Patreon is only like $3 a month. So, uh, and there's other tiers too, but you can read what those do. But for now, Jasmine, how did you enjoy playing Newt once more today? I can love playing Newt. <laughs> so much <laughs> and and I just love the fine line of like being playing that like uncultured very like tribal ignorant goblin <laughs> <laughs> like using a belch attack on a person doesn't seem out of place <laughs> <laughs> no you're completely right uh, very, very, very much so. So, um, Newt is, is quite the character that, uh, J Jasmine made, and originally intended to be just a guest feature, I was like, you know what? Jasmine's got the availability, and she's got the roleplay chops, and she's got fucking, uh, she's got such a great character concept, I just couldn't help but add her to the permanent pool. So, uh, it's been fast proving to be a wonderful addition, and I love your goofy bullshit every time you do it. You always have... The weirdest ways of using your spells and shit, and I like the random element of it. So thank you, Jasmine. I appreciate you. And make sure that you guys check out her channel. She is very funny, and she's great company. And ask her about Moose Juice on her channel. Uh, I won't let her tell you now, because I need you guys to have some incentive. But make sure you go to Jasmine's channel, and when she's streaming, just inquire about Moose Juice. <laughs> but thank you, Jasmine. I appreciate you, and I'm glad to have you here. And Ash. Ash, Ash, Ash. How did you enjoy oh, City well, once more? Another fantastic game. I love making people barf. Let's go. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I just threw that on the other goblin at the start of this campaign, being like, I'm sure this stick won't have, like, too much of a relevant use. It'll be a funny little gag. And then here you are, like, it's barfing time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I thought about it. I'm just like, I know Snooty doesn't want to kill them, so let's just make them super dehydrated and hate life. <laughs> you know, we're yes. trying to be civilized goblins. Thank you very much. You, you At all least this way we <laughs> you got you all got together an inflicted hangover simulator on these poor bastards. Exactly. <laughs> well. Thank you, Ash, and as always, you are fucking fantastic. Your role plays are always knock it out of the park. You uh, make fantastic, wonderful artwork that I adore and appreciate. And oh, thank you. Of course, and I really can't wait to do uh, more role play shenanigans with you throughout the week. And I look forward to doing Aether with pretty much all of you uh, tomorrow because that's going to be a hell of a fun time. And oh boy, it's going to be a busy day. But Oh, it's going to be very busy for you guys. Much yes, excite all around. Indeed. But um, I love it, and I can't wait to run my own module in Aether, because I'm so excited to do that. And, and I gonna... can't wait to help with that. Yes, Ash is going to be my co-GM for that module, and Honey and Effie are going to be involved in it as uh, minions of the Dark Lords that will be running in parallel during it, but I'm not going to spell anything else. I'm also else. working on the map. Yes. That's a pain in the ass. Honey is helping me build the map <laughs> with free pre assets that we're going to be using, and uh, I'll Fuck be yeah. talking about that with her more as we go forwards because map making is not easy. Um, Kill me. Yeah. Or, yeah. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank you, Ash, once again. I appreciate you. And uh, make sure I that you guys. You. She's a very busy, talented artist, but if you guys want to sit there and grovel at her feet with the opportunity to maybe throw handfuls of cash at her for the privilege of having her make something for you i highly recommend <laughs> read my name on the twitch screen please <laughs> right um so uh yeah you guys can definitely tune into her channel whenever she's doing all kinds of stuff she's been doing a lot of vr rp um and it's very fun to watch she's a very cute uh 
Oh, if you want to find the sessions, um, you can f find those at the link here to the YouTube channel. So if you go to the link, the tiny URL that says watch previous sessions here, that'll bring you to the YouTube archive where you can watch all of the previous uh, broadcasts. I have ones that are going up on edit on my channel, um, but that takes a while and requires a lot of export time and payment for editors, and that is like challenging. So right now, a lot of the archives of the stuff I run in edited down format is not available on my YouTube for the studio because I just need to find somebody who has the time and uh, like works with me for the budget to do it. So uh, unfortunately, those archives are going to be a little harder to come by edited, but you can watch the unedited uploaded VODs. I mean, they are still kind of edited, but um, yeah, if you go to Effie's YouTube channel, you can absolutely uh, see all of the broadcasts on there uh, without like super intense edits, but definitely still edited down for a little bit of ease of consumption. But to that effect, speaking of Effie, how did you enjoy Desi once more tonight? I I really love playing Desi. It's amazing. It it's such a interesting way to show that she's got high intelligence, but is also still a goblin. So. It's it's kind of like I don't know, and like I just appreciate all the options and everything that you give just to be like these little fucking mischievous little fucks because uh, it is a lot of fun. Plus, yeah. I totally got to like fucking give somebody like basically you know a skin rash and then pour fucking. Cal traps into their invisible box prison. So, I mean, <laughs> if I did that as a normal person, everybody would be like, wow, Effie, you're a sadist. As a goblin, they're like, oh, look at that cute little thick gobbo doing stuff, delivering justice. It's invincible. I'm pretty sure Desi can get away with anything. She, she's just, this is too much power. Probably not murder, because then that's the big O. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but. Oh my goodness. Well, I honestly, I'm, I'm, it's really funny that you guys decided to chase down the shroud too. Cause like, I was just like, I'm going to put her here, but there's a very good chance they're not going to really like catch her. Cause she's got her own shit going on. I just like to throw little other narratives in the, in the way as we're developing it. But you guys were like, I'm going to chase that bitch down. And I really couldn't, couldn't come up with a good reason why she got away. Cause none of her stats are like, magic disappearing smoke grenade or like levitation or anything so i was like okay it'll come down to rolls and you caught her and talked with her and then she realized that you guys weren't you know like evil assholes and she is a champion of justice she's basically like <laughs> shroud is uh the shroud is, is is essentially if batman was a feminist and really hated it when people cheated on their wives <laughs> oh yeah she's not a fan of infidelity reference but oh yeah no 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 she has a yeah. whole story to her and a really interesting foundation and everything but i don't want to spoil it because that's for you guys to figure it out are you um, gonna spoil it for us no i'm not gonna spoil it no Damn. Uh, <laughs> um, but what if what if a wife cheats on her husband huh huh uh, she probably would pull the same thing in reverse. She's 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 okay. more of an. Well, then she's she's okay with me. She's definitely. Uh, she just doesn't like it when people lie in general. She exposes that element oh. like a big part of what she does to show everybody that something's been going on is she leaves her symbol on the door of a household uh -huh. of somebody guilty of of things that are like considered lying to somebody essentially. So it tells the rest of the town like this this person's not trustworthy is essentially what she does. Ah, she's a social assassin. Correct. Yes, she attacks. Oh. attacks she she stabs you in the clout. But I, I don't want to be stabbed in the clutus. <laughs> no, no. Everybody gets two XP, and you put in the fucking raid. Effie is banned. <laughs> right, we'll do. Screen. We'll do. We'll do. <laughs> we'll do. I'm raid entered. There you go. Wait, did Gabo steal someone's husband's? No, Not none yet. of us have done that yet. Uh, yes, there, there has, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, give us time. We, oh. you'll see. I don't want to ruin anything for you, Trazu, but we've done a lot of shit. You should probably, I, I would, I would list off some of our exploits, but since you just got here, like, you, you've got a lot to catch up on. Um, <laughs> there's gonna be 15 episodes on the YouTube. 
I am incredibly proud to be part of this, uh, you know, just this whole affair that just brings me joy every Sunday. And I'm really glad that you guys like it too. It uh, really warms my heart because like Sunday, Sunday and Monday are just like, they're the best days out of my week mm. for sure. Agreed. And, uh, I get to hang out with my friends and it's just, I get to be just a, a shitty little goblin. So <laughs> it is pretty fucking great. All right, but make sure you guys tune in tomorrow to Effie the Cat's channel and the Art of Ashes channel and Honey Oni Twitch's channel. Possibly my own? I don't know. I still haven't figured out what the problem is with my stream thing. But anyways, long story short, we're about to raid out. So goblins, go ahead and say goodnight to everybody, and we will see them later. Good night. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye, everybody. Uh, make sure you...